to the Humphreys who spoke to you, not Herring. Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, very warm welcome to our council meeting. And just for purpose of clarity, we have got the doors open to create additional ventilation as we're more than aware that it was rather warm the last meeting, together with the fact from a public health perspective to allow as much ventilation as possible. So apologies if it's inconveniencing anyone, but it is for everyone's uh, health and benefit. Okay, um, Paul, we have some apologies. Um, Democratic Services Manager will read out the apologies received so far. Thank you, Chairman. I've received apologies from Councillors Baker, Bignall, Chohan, Chandler, Cooper, Davenport, Dyball, Eastwood, Gareth Eales, Terry Eales, Terry Guilford, Golby, Grant, Hawes, Herring, Hinch, King, Manners, Morgan, Pritchard, Smith and Salisbury Timms. Thank you very much. Any further apologies this evening? Councillor Randall, thank you. Councillor? Jolly, thank you much indeed. Thank you. Any further apologies from anyone? No, thank you indeed. Okay, move on to item two, declarations of interest for members and officers. To receive a declaration of interest, it's rather important, as we all know, West Hans Council takes seriously breach of code of conduct. Councillors need only declare an interest that has not been recorded in the register of interests. Any councillor who declares such an interest must remove themselves for the whole item Councillors are asked to declare the item number in which they have an interest in, the nature of the interest, and whether it is a disclosable pecuniary interest or non-statutory interest. Any interests at this point that have not been already declared? Thank you. Item three, the minutes of the last uh, meeting, which is the annual meeting of the Council held on the 19th of May. I've been made aware of one correction for the minutes. Uh, the Councillor William Barter was recorded as having attended when, in fact, he was absent, unfortunately, and sent apologies that were accepted. Subject to that change, is it the Council's wish that I sign the minutes of the previous meeting as a true and accurate record? Thank you very much indeed. Okay, item four, Chairman's announcements. I uh, regret to inform Council of the very sad passing of former South Northamptonshire District Councillor and Northamptonshire County Councillor Ian Morris, who has passed away following a very short illness. Ian was elected to South Northamptonshire Council in 2011 and served until 2017. He was a member of Northamptonshire County Council from 2013 until 2021. He served in a number of roles, notably as Cabinet Member for Transport, Highways, Environment and Protect Public Protection, and then as cabinet member for adult social care and public health. A role which saw him play a prominent part in the management of COVID-19 pandemic in the county, and we know the importance that that played, and his face was obviously very visual, and the content that he gave us through the briefings on a regular basis. On South Northampton Council, he served on a number of committees, including policy review and development, community and resources, and the scrutiny committee. It's also my sad duty to inform Council that former Northamptonshire County Councillor Rosemary Bromwich has passed away on the 10th of June at her home in Cornwall. Rosie represented the Council Toaster Division on Northamptonshire County Council from 1997 to 2012. She served as a Cabinet Member for the Community Services for 2005 to 2006 and then as Cabinet Member for Adult Care from 2007 to 2009. She was Chairman of the Council from 2010 to 2011 and also served on the Police Authority. Rosemary was married to Nick and had two children, Janice and Neil, and two grandchildren, James and Poppy. I'd like to invite Joe Gordon of the Royal and Derngate Theatre to say a few words about Ian, a super chap who brought many a smile to all our faces, and it has to be said will be missed by many. Joe has joined us this evening. She's the Chief Executive of the uh, Trust at the Royal and Derngate Theatres, and we welcome her this evening and thank her for the opportunity to say a few words on behalf. Thank you. Joe. Thank you, Andre. It's indeed my honour and my privilege to be here on behalf of Roland Durngate to do a reading to mark the passing of our trustee and friend Ian Morris. Ian had been on our board for three years. He wasn't just a board member to us, he was a trusted confidant, someone who balanced a huge sense of fun and mischief with a real calm intelligence and with complete integrity. He was part of a crucial COVID recovery group that was helpful 
in steering our organization through the choppiest of waters. He advocated on our behalf. He told anybody, well, anyone who would listen really, how crucial the arts was and how quickly everybody should come to our support until we could make it through to less turbulent times. Ian loved theatre. He believed in the power of theatre to transform lives. And in giving so much time and expertise to our organisation and our teams, he had a profound impact on so many in our county, as I know he did through so many of his other council activities. The passage I want to share quickly is a poem by Ralph Emerson that captures some of the joy and passion of Ian and the memories that he will leave us with. We will miss him a great deal. To laugh often and much. To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent persons and the affection of children. The admiration of honest critics and to endure the betrayal of false friends. <laughs> to appreciate the beauty, to find the best in others to give of oneself, to leave the world a bit better, to have played and laughed with enthusiasm and sung with exultation, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Joe. Very good of you. I'd like to invite other councillors to speak as well uh, who've asked to speak already. Uh, Councillor Lizzie Bowen. I first met Ian in 2015 as a newly elected district councillor at South North Hants District. As a newbie to politics, I was allocated a seat in chambers next to Ian. With his cheeky smile and wonderful sense of humour, he had me in fits of giggles quite frequently. Ian often helped me during some very difficult moments in my political career, both at election time but also during NCC's financial recovery when we both served on cabinet in a number of roles. Ian had a wonderful, naughty, schoolboy sense of humour that helped all our cabinet group through some very tough times. He was also on my management committee, um, serving as chairman of South North Hants Conservative Association at the time. Ian's talents were not just limited to politics. At one stage or other, he was a budding actor, lawyer, property developer, parliamentary candidate, and chairman of the Derngate Theatre, and Joe has already spoken tonight. He was an awesome friend who I am truly devastated to have lost. Hey, Councillor Bowen. Councillor Wendy Randall. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, you know, it's very, very sad to hear of the loss of both those ex-councillors, and from the Labour group, I'd like to offer my sincere condolences. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sally Bedsworth. Thank you, Chair. It's very difficult when somebody dies that young, um, but he achieved a lot in his time. I really got on with Ian uh, when I was on the County Council with him. He was always personable, he was always pleasant, he always had time for you, and I think that's such an important place in people's lives. If the people are prepared to listen to you, and take notice of you. Um, I was so surprised when I heard of his death um, with somebody so young and with so much promise. He'll be sadly missed. Thank you, Councillor Bisworth. Colleagues, will you please join me for a recollection and a, um, a thank you to those two councillors who've served the public very well indeed. It's been a tremendously difficult thing to hear of the loss of anyone, and particularly councillors and colleagues who obviously we were working with for many, many years, and who obviously left such a great impact in community as well as here in the council. Will you please join me for a minute's applause to remember both Ian and Rosemary. Thank you.
Thank you very much indeed. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, just to Councillor Meredith, you've indicated to speak. I, I did press my uh, button to speak, but apparently it didn't work. So anyway, I, I just wanted to add my, um, my little bit about Ian, if I may. Um, I worked with Ian on the development control for, uh, for a, a few years. When we used to go visiting, we always went out to dinner uh, at lunchtime, because normally it was a, a, a daytime trip. And I remember uh, when he was first appointed as chair of the development control, uh, he sat there and I thought to myself, well, what a good looking man he was. And I, I joked with him and I said, Ian, I said, you must have a lot of women uh, running after you. I said, you're such a, a good looking man. And he, he laughed in his own way that he did. But we had so many good times together uh, and it was brilliant. And one thing I like to remember about Ian, he, he could take a joke. And that's what I liked about him. He, he never showed any uh, uh, political allegiance when we was on that committee. And we used to thoroughly enjoy ourselves. And when I heard the news that he'd passed, I was really upset because he's so young and he's so vibrant. And, 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 and it really uh, brought it home to me, how life is so vulnerable. So I, I remember Ian with very fond memories and I said to his family, a sincere condolences from us all. I know Ian would be uh, pleased that he's received the acknowledgements that he has. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Meredith. Just to confirm also that I have written to um, both Ian's family and Rose's family and obviously expressed our condolences. Uh, there are various different arrangements in place, but there is a, a, a memorial service being held at uh, uh, Ian's uh, home and details of that uh, have been circulated and are available through his Facebook page in fact so can I direct uh, members perhaps to that um, if you are uh, interested or willing or able to go and basically please do make contact in advance as they need to arrange the details and the arrangements there thank you I'd like to thank also Joe Gordon for coming this evening which has been a, a fitting tribute to uh, Ian which I'm sure you've been delighted Okay, colleagues, just to confirm that obviously a little bit later on this evening, around about eight o'clock, we'll be taking a comfort break. I think it's important that everyone's health is looked after at all times, and uh, we mustn't forget that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, also, we've had a fantastic uh, opportunity to engage in uh, many events, and uh, as chairman, and I know my vice chairman as well, uh, John, has been very busy indeed, um, represented the council. We've had some, some really excellent uh, news in terms of Jubilee events. Uh, Windrush Day, Pride, Armed Forces Day, and of course Northampton Carnival, which have been tremendous. And I also had the tremendous pleasure and the honour to uh, greet His Royal Highness, uh, the Duke Gloucester, this morning at Northampton Museum and Art Gallery with colleagues and uh, Chancellor Jonathan Nunn and Councillor Adam Brown and colleagues. Um, and uh, it was a tremendous pleasure to show something really quite fitting for West Northamptonshire. Um, our prize museum and art gallery and the reopening and we also held uh, various different functions there with the architects um, who have been superb in terms of what they've achieved. It really is quite impressive. Uh, so delighted to uh, represent the council at many different events and uh, will continue to do so. And if you have an event in your area, uh, please do feel free to draw it to the attention um, of the admin team and hopefully uh, fitting it into schedules. Uh, we'd love to represent the council there for you. Um, I know that... Um, my Vice Chairman, John, has something to say as well. Oh, thank you very much, Chairman. I just wanted to uh, commend uh, the Town Mayor uh, of Northampton in respect to the reception that he arranged on Thursday for Ukrainian Constitution Day. Uh, I was invited not as a Vice Chairman, but as, as a host. I came with the two Ukrainians who uh, uh, joined our household earlier this week, and they met 50 or so other Ukrainians in the courtyard just outside. Well, frankly, a, a, an extremely moving occasion involving a, a violinist and playing some folk songs and, of course, the Ukrainian national anthem. Not a, not a dry eye in the house, frankly. Um, uh, Mayor, I thank you for organising that. It was most appropriate.
Shepherd. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Um, and also like to draw attention that the, uh, I think the end of July, I believe the last Saturday in July, um, the Mayor of Northampton, uh, Councillor Meredith, will be walking around his patch uh, at Hampton Park for his charities, and we do ask for support there. And I know that uh, he's very much welcoming helping his local charities there. So well done. I think it's important that we all do our bit for our areas and West Northamptonshire Council in general too. Thank you very much indeed for your support also for my charities, Northamptonshire Search and Rescue and the Air Ambulance that have received really good support over the last few weeks. Thank you. Okay, item five on pilot participation. And uh, there's been one request to present a petition under this item. Hayley Moore will submit a petition to the council about making the toaster roads safe. Hayley Moore, you will have up to three minutes to speak if you'd like to take the place of the microphone. Thank you. Just like to push the button on the left hand side. Thank you. Thank you. As a resident of the Toaster Road, I witness daily dangerous, antisocial, reckless, and speeding driving by most motorists. Um, and after witnessing firsthand the carnage following the horrendous collision on the evening of the 10th of June, leaving a young woman with her skull caved in, fighting for her life, I was left deeply saddened by the downright selfish way the road is being used. The top section from the Mirway roundabout to the Gloucester Avenue roundabout, the section I, as well as many other young families live, does not necessitate a 40 mile an hour speed limit. If anything, this only encourages speeding, as motorists see this as a minimum target speed they should be driving at. Facts are there, that if you hit a pedestrian at 40 miles an hour, there's a 90% chance you're going to kill them. Yet at 30 miles an hour, this is reduced to 20%. We're talking life and death. I started the petition, Make the Toaster Road Safe, which currently stands at over 590 signatures of support, because after seeing a young woman's precious life draining from her, something that will sadly stay with me a lifetime, it didn't sit well with me that by doing nothing could mean another tragedy. My children, as well as many others from Abbeyfield School, walk this route daily. There's a popular recreation ground further down the road used by many local children, and not forgetting this is a residential road. It's not a dual carriageway or a racetrack. Traffic calming measures must be put in place to make this road safe for all users and residents. The simplest, most common sense one being to reduce the 40 mile an hour section to match the rest of the road, making the entire road 30 miles an hour. The local authority have a statutory duty under section 39 of the 1988 Road Traffic Act to take steps both to reduce and prevent accidents. And by continuing to ignore the danger this road poses, to ignore the multitude of accidents and collisions happening weekly, to do nothing, you're failing this duty, you're failing your constituents, and more lives will continue to be lost. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hayley. Uh, would Councillor Phil Lowry, as Cabinet Member responsible for highways, like to respond and acknowledge, please? Can I uh, uh, thank Hayley for coming along and presenting the uh, petition this evening? Um, I'm aware of the tragedy that occurred on the 10th of June, and uh, all accidents such as this are a real tragedy, and we obviously have to take stock and review uh, the situation to see if we can make any necessary improvements uh, to prevent further such tragedies. I wholly uh, appreciate what is being said about the speed limit, and I think that's something that we can perhaps address uh, fairly quickly, and I will speak to officers about that. But we will, Mr Chairman, accept the, position, accept the petition, take it away, thoroughly investigate all aspects of road safety in the area, and uh, we will get a response uh, to Hayley in due course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Lowert. So we will arrange a written response for you, Hayley, and uh, thank you for coming this evening. Okay, uh, on the next section, statements or questions. Uh, there have been no requests to make statements at the meeting on this item. 
Uh, but we have received three written questions, members of the public. The questions and responses are set out. The document has been circulated. I'm advised that Mr. Alan Moore is present. Is that correct? Is Mr. Pro Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, do you wish to ask a supplementary question to any of the points that you've raised? Thank you. Okay. Item six, then, we have priority opposition motion. Under the rules set out within the Constitution, this item is limited to 15 minutes. The mover of the priority opposition motion shall have five minutes to move the motion. The seconder shall have three minutes. A member of responding on behalf of the administration shall have five minutes. And the leader of the principal opposition shall have two minutes to reply. No other questions or debate shall be allowed. I'll invite Councillor Wendy Randall to introduce the motion and move the proposal. We have up to five minutes. Wendy, just to give you an indication that on your screen as well, on the large screens here, uh, the time remaining is displayed, and I'm sure you'll uh, adhere to that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to read out this motion, um, as I'm sure members of the public may be um, watching. The West Northamptonshire Council wishes to reassert the importance of the Nolan principles of selfishness, integrity, objectivity, accountability, openness, honesty, and leadership for all in public life. These principles serve as the foundation of our councillor code of conduct and underpin how councillors must behave when carrying out their duties. The honour of becoming an elected representative comes with the responsibility of maintaining and building the confidence in which the democratic political process is held both for central and local governments. These principles guide not only how decisions and functions are carried out by elected mem members, but also how they treat officers, the public and their colleagues. In light of the attention these principles are receiving locally and nationally, this council therefore notes the seven Nolan principles of public life underpin the conduct and behaviour expected of our elected representatives nationally and locally. The obligation as a council and as individual councillors to adhere to these principles at all times. This council resolves to defend and protect these principles as a matter of duty so as to maintain and build the confidence of residents in their democratic institutions. That members should confront and report actions or admissions by other members of this council that appear to be contrary to the code of conduct adopted by the council, which includes and reflects the Nolan principles. I'm not gonna speak any more on this and I will wait for my right to reply. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Randall. I'd like to invite Councillor Bob Purser to second the proposal. You have three minutes, Councillor Purser. Thank you, Chair. I thought the Nolan principles had been well baked into our democracy, uh, that what had gone on in this county and town were a thing of the past and lessons had been learned, and that our local MPs saw how bad things were, and the, hence we had new local authority. And we want to, um, and that openness, transparency, accountability were the way forward, and that should apply locally, but also nationally. I'm therefore disappointed that our four MPs did not remove Mr. Johnson for his egregious breaking of the rules, let alone his disrespect for his own staff, cleaners, security staff, and so on. And also that he didn't respect the British public and their role in preventing this COVID outbreak not becoming any worse than the number of hundreds of thousand deaths or more that we've suffered. But I think the electorate aren't fools and I think they see more clearly sometimes, um, I think they see more clearly than sometimes we give them credit I think uh, members opposite might recognise that if the election for West Northamptonshire had taken place this May rather than last May, the council would have a very different complexion to the one we have here. I think the Prime Minister um, really should be asked to resign and 
national politics should re-establish the value of the Nolan principles that we are all signed up to. Thank you, Chair. I second this. Thank you, Councillor Purser. I'd like to invite now Councillor Jonathan Nunn, uh, leader, to, to respond on behalf of the administration up to five minutes. Thank you. Okay. Thank, uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, glad to respond to this. Um, I, I think I'm proud of West North Ants. I think I'm pretty proud that actually I think that councillors on all sides do abide by these. Certainly they're well baked in. Look, let's look at West North Ants. We now know we have 426,000 residents, 174,000 uh, households, 165 parish and town councils, communities. We have a net budget of 350 million, 1,500 miles of roads. We provide services for vulnerable adults, 1,000 more or more children who have been through dreadful trauma uh, and, um, and difficulties, regulation to keep people play, uh, safe. We have all sorts of responsibilities and 3,000 staff to deliver them. So this important opposition opportunity to make a point about West North Ants Council, to come up with ideas for the council and the administration to consider, seems to be, frankly, a wasted opportunity uh, this evening. The, the Nolan principles are baked in. They're in our constitution. They're in our code of conduct. And at the highly efficient uh, election process we had, most of us had signed a declaration to say we'd abide by that code of conduct within five or ten minutes of getting our election result. We're all committed to that. If that's not enough, they're pretty well baked on in law. So if we hadn't signed that, I think we could be you know, accused and, and, and legally removed as a councillor or follow a process or whatever. So in short, I, I just think that this valuable opposition speaking slot is not being used to bring ideas or challenges to the council that the administration can consider for the good of the residents of West North Ants, but rather the opportunity appears to be being used to poke Boris Johnson in the eye. And that seems to me to be a rotten opportunity missed. Yes, of course, we'll be supporting this. Although I have to say, some of our members are just so completely exasperated at the wasted opportunity that could have seen ideas come forward or constructive suggestions. Uh, and the fact that these principles are already compulsory and are not optional, that actually they might feel inclined to vote against it and to abstain, not because they are not 100% signed up to the Nolan principles, but because they just feel this whole motion is a pointless exercise. But I've got an idea to salvage some good out of this. If we really want to serve the residents well, perhaps there are other principles to which we could agree to adopt. How about this one? How about all councillors make a commitment to read the council and the cabinet papers before they make poorly informed comments on important issues. How about, how about promising to be better informed before making public or media statements designed to scare people or to manipulate the public's emotion for political gain? How about committing to knowing the facts before criticizing WNC staff and officers, or committing to professional development by always attending the informative member briefings that are arranged for councillors and reading in full the weekly members briefing email. Maybe it's turning up for the briefings that directors agree to uh, and then find that they're sitting there waiting for opposition members who don't arrive. Or maybe it's still seeking to solve problems and not milk political advantage from the problem by delaying and waiting for an important, for an public opportunity to grandstand. In other words, come to us quick and get it sorted. And finally, why don't we just all agree that we'll use every opportunity to make WNC and West North Ants as a whole better by putting sensible debate on council-related matters ahead of national politics. Mr. Chairman, I would just ask that in their summing up, the promote proposer states clearly whether or not they feel these or a version of them are actually really valuable additional principles to adopt. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dunn. <clears throat> I'd like to call on Councillor Randall, please. If you'd like to sum up and respond, you have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. You may feel that it's a wasted motion, but when you're outside listening to what the residents have to say, they drag up from the past, which I have not mentioned at all, and I won't, but even last night at a residents' meeting, residents are saying, how does this happen and how does that happen? Is there corruption going on within the council? So what I wanted to do was actually lay it down. We recently had a planning meeting where our, we had to go over our code of conduct to make sure that we were adhering to everything as we should. So that was another reason why I felt 
um, I needed to bring this motion forward. I didn't mention um, anybody by name, but I know that the general public are very angry at, for over the last two years during those COVID times when we were adhering to rules and others weren't. I know people, I was delivering shopping to people who were self-isolating that got reported and had police knocking on their door to say that they had had a visit. I then had to get in contact with the police to say, I did not enter the door, I left the shopping at the end of the pavement. So to think how much money has been wasted investigating people within Westminster when they were clearly partying, not once, twice, three times or four times, is an absolute national disgrace. So the reason why I brought this forward, and you may well think it's a waste of time, but I just wanted the public to understand that as councillors, we do have a code of conduct. We should be adhering to that code of conduct and just reminding any councillor that if anybody isn't or they feel they're acting inappropriately, then they have got the courage to come up and report it. The same as any bullying that may go on within the council. So you may think that it was a waste. I don't, and I don't feel the public will either. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Randall. I'd like to ask for a vote now, and I'll just ensure that, Paul, you have the details there for electronic vote. Ladies and gentlemen, you've gone through the earlier example of how to vote. So I'd like to ask that all those who are for Please vote, yes. Okay, thank you. And all those against the motion? Yeah, sure, voted. I beg your pardon. Sorry, that's me going back about one meeting then, didn't you? Just checking all listening there. It's Smashing. Okay. Well, the yeses have it. And it's a... Uh, yeah, it's clear. So I won't necessarily announce the numbers, but it's a yes game, so it's a yes and no. The yeses definitely have it by majority. Thank you very much indeed. The motion is carried. Okay, item seven, I can't remember reports and records of decisions taken by the cabinet. Um, interesting point there early on, the, to ensure that we do read cabinet papers and be informed, that's always very useful. And there's a lot of activity that takes, part, uh, that takes place there at cabinet meetings. Uh, they have been circulated, all those reports and members before the start of the meeting. Cabinet members will have uh, been able to give any update required in their report with a time limit of two minutes each, upon which members will be able to ask the relevant portfolio holder questions without notice. Um, in order to keep the 60 minute limit and uh, maintain fairness between members, um, I'll limit the number of questions if I have to, uh, to ensure that uh, we have fairness and we try and get through all of those reports because I know we haven't been able to achieve that in the last few meetings. Um, Councillor Nunn, so if you'd like to um, start from there with your report, please. You have up to two minutes each. Jolly good. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. I'll briefly summarise, uh, starting with the communications area. Um, I want to mention the Jubilee activities across all the different communities, but what a splendid weekend it was. And I'd like to particularly thank maybe our comms team, headed up by the Deputy Chief Executive, but a whole raft of other staff at WNC for the events that we were involved uh, in delivering. Uh, other things on comms, the Talk of the Town is a, is a campaign for supporting the market trader, partic the traders, particularly in view of the move. Our parish briefings uh, are going out to parish and town councils and seem to be extremely well received, so we're glad we established that line uh, of um, communication. On internal co um, communications, the Chief Executive and myself, accompanied by directors, have been doing roadshows around the various offices. This has been a really good way of getting a feel for what's on staff mi staff's minds, how the morale is and so on. On balance, we're feeling pre finding pretty 
uh, people pretty up, upbeat. Some suggestions are coming forward, and it's been a great opportunity to grab those and to take those, take those forward. Also, staff networks are really taking off. We've got them across a wide variety of different uh, areas, including Pride, uh, uh, um, black and minority ethnic groups, carers, disability, uh, and so on. And those are proving very popular. Annual report went to Cabinet. Now, we're really, really proud of this. Um, and as a consequence, we thought we'd put a copy on everybody's desk. Do have a quick look. It's got both hard KPIs, which we measure quarterly at Cabinet meetings, uh, available to everybody, but also we've got some honest commentary through each department, not just of successes, although there are plenty of successes, but also of the challenges that they also feel they will be facing in the coming year. So I'd urge you to have a, a good look through that. It's a light read in the way it's uh, set out. It's very uh, attractive. We've got some work going on on the website. There is more to do to make our website work well, both for councillors yeah, uh, and uh, for residents, but we're on the way with it. Sustainability uh, is, is really starting to get somewhere. The next area is uh, we have a work plan uh, of which the cross-party group will be splitting into smaller groups to work with uh, each director and uh, cabinet member uh, across a wide variety of different areas. You'll see the areas listed there. These are the specific areas in which we're starting to focus. Meanwhile, work is underway to calculate baseline emissions data and so on, and we're welcoming at the moment, two new project officers to that team, with two of our uh, councillors going off um, to uh, be nominated to attend the UK 100 Leadership Academy. On the civic side, um, uh, we're working hard to promote the role of chairman and put that on the map, uh, along with the chairman. Uh, also, we've got work on going with the West North Ants coat of arms, which is the, if you like, the heraldic coat of arms, quite separate to our formal uh, business uh, logo that's going on at the moment. Thank you, Councillor Nunn. That's very helpful of you indeed. Oh. <laughs> and uh, we have three questions for you. Uh, Councillor Randall, please. Thank you, first. Brief. Use the microphone, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, the Queen's Jubilee, you know, was lots of celebrations, which was lovely to see. Um, I had a lot of feedback from residents in Daventry um, saying they were very disappointed that there wasn't a beacon lit. Um, uh, you do say that beacons were lit, but I'm not sure if they were lit or whether they were projected. Apparently the town council did get, um, they were asked a week before whether they wanted to put some money in and have a, um, a building lit but there's nobody, nowhere really in the town and it wasn't within their budget. So um, if there was a reason why the beacons weren't lit, it, you know, please could I know why so as I can feed that back. Parish briefings, um, yes, I think on the whole they've been very well received um, and it's keep, keeping the parishes up to speed. So, you know, that's really good, thank you. Um, the only comeback that I've had from that is that um, when, they're deal when parishes and towns are dealing directly with officers, really good, but if they have to get through on the switchboard, it's still, you know, an, it can be a nightmare. Um, everything else is coming along quite nicely. Um, the website, still quite a few issues on the website. Lots of, I've tried to put in leader of the council and I've got no results, sorry, Jonathan. Um, <laughs> but it, it's certain, it's th when you use the website, try and use it as if you are a member of the public. Um, I was looking for a scrutiny committee and I put late place scrutiny, no result. Um, so is there just one officer that is directly dealing with that that, you, you know, members of the public can go to? Do they come through us? Do we go through members' inquiry? What's the quickest way um, to get that across? Um, but I'll leave the rest to the other speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nunn, would you like to answer that briefly? Yeah, uh, uh, gladly. You. Many of them were just sort of observations, so t uh, I'll take them. Uh, when, when the virtual beacons was the thing. The Queen lit a virtual one, didn't she? And similarly, one of the, the biggest ones that we did was the lift tower, which, as you say, was projected. That, that is just the modern way, rather than burning 
releasing carbon, logs, putting <laughs> sparks everywhere and so on. But yeah, absolutely great. Uh, other town councils did. We would have loved to work with Daventry. If there is nowhere, as you say, then perhaps that's a problem, but we maybe think about that more carefully for the future. Um, I, I, I think, you know, members' inquiries is, is offering, and I hear from many colleagues, a really good service, so I would recommend it. I, I, you make a fair point about the website, and I think some of this is even worse from our legacy, you know, Daventry, SNC, and Borough websites, in them being put together in the way they have been. Uh, and, and you're dead right, that search function is not good. I would wholly recognize that, and I'll even give you a little tip for the moment, but we must fix this. If you put into Google what you're looking for, it's more likely to find the answer on our website than our search facility is, because of the way that that scans pages and so on. Honestly, that's what I would do. Uh, but meantime, that is a problem we have to fix, along with quite a, a lot of other stuff. But our digital team is quite a significant team, and they're working on many of these improvements. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sally Bidsworth. Thank you, Chair. Um, firstly, I want to echo what the leader said about Jubilee. I think it was a wonderful time for a lot of people, and it brought communities back together after a long period of being separated. And I think it was a joyous occasion. The TV coverage was actually spectacular. The concert was good for those people who couldn't go out and visit. I think it was really a great opportunity. Um, I'm not going to ask you an awful lot of questions, but there's one question I'm very, very keen to know the answer to, and that is, recently, North North Hans has awarded themselves a huge pay rise. Uh, I think it's over 10%. And in this climate at the moment, I think it would be terrible for us to follow suit. And I hope I have your reassurance that we won't be doing anything like that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sally. I'd like to share all the comments you said about the Jubilee and, uh, and everything else. We have no intent to look afresh at, at allowances. Not here to defend anybody. I understand their independent panel at the start did their review last year and recommended a, re a review after 12 months, which is what they've done. But, but I think in the current focus, let me just talk for us. For myself, and this is something we should be discussing at group leaders' meetings, because I suspect that we would be unanimous uh, amongst all, all the parties and the independents. At this point, it is not the time to consider revisions or certainly increases uh, to ours. I, I think it's settled in. It was done well, I, I, I believe. You know, they did, they did a good job. They did a thorough job. We voted it through, didn't we? And let's stick to that. Yeah, happy, happy to give you that assurance, Sally. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nunn. Uh, Councillor Stone, you had a question. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've got three very quick questions. Um, could you just tell me what housing solutions means? Because I don't know, it's in your report. Housing solutions, you refer, and if it's, and if it's um, part of the housing strategy, you mentioned citizen's advice, but again, you failed to mention community law, so it just makes me very anxious about that uh, very, very important body, so I'd like to know if you're including community law in income uh, advice and debt advice. And the other, the other question is about scrutiny. Do you think we could have regular updates on scrutiny work at Cabinet, please? Um, and I really want to know if scrutiny is making any difference. So there seems to be a reluctance on, on, in the Cabinet to receive recommendations from uh, scrutiny. So I'd, I'd quite like some assurance that you do see the scrutiny function as more than a tick box exercise, if that's okay with you. And just lastly, in relation to reading papers, if, like me, you allocate time for doing that, but the papers are incomplete, it's not very helpful. So could I please ask that when the papers are published that they are all published? It would be very, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stone. Councillor Nelm, would you like to respond to that briefly? I'm happy to comment. Probably got to take a couple of those straight on the chin, really. Housing solutions is probably a pompous way for saying deciding what house people might live in and under what arrangement. I think that's purely the context in that. that is. I'll try and stick more to plain language. Uh, and the reference, uh, the original draft of what's going on that I got, it just said with partners. And I always think you need to put something in to bring alive who we're talking about. So it was my example of citizens' advice, but that in no way undermines... Uh, my admiration for what community law do. Uh, at, 
side by side as two partners, don't they? So please don't read anything further into that, uh, Councillor. We're really happy to have scrutiny updates at Cabinet. And, and my comments before were genuine. We almost, you know, we know that scrutiny put a lot of hours in. We know that officers are putting a lot of hours in to bring reports. So we would, we would love to, genuinely. And if we haven't got the formality of that process right, you know, if, if it in any way scrutiny doesn't feel comfortable to come along to Cabinet and do it publicly, we'll receive it any way you like, whether it's a report that's just emailed or, or sent to us, or, or we sit down, you ask the chair, uh, the, the chair of a scrutiny committee may ask me and the relevant cabinet member to have a meeting and talk things through. All that full formal, come to the meeting and present a report. We're really, really keen to hear. I sincerely, sincerely mean that. But the second one's take on the chin. My report was late, and that might be the reference. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nunn. Councillor Adam Brown, would you like to give us an update, please? You have up to two minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Just uh, moving through the report in, in order, just to highlight certain points. Uh, I'd like to commend the, the library staff who have done uh, sterling work in organising a large number of uh, drop-in sessions for, uh, for Ukrainians and the families supporting them. I'd uh, also like to highlight the, uh, the LAD2, and I apologise for the abbreviation in there without uh, explanation. That stands for Local Authority Delivery 2. It refers to the installation of uh, uh, heat source air pumps at, uh, at, so, uh, at social housing uh, units. Uh, we've done 15 thus far. I acknowledge that we need to go a lot further in making our social housing stock more green, more carbon neutral, uh, more fit for purpose for the modern age. Um, the housing strategy con uh, development continues apace. We've uh, concluded the first round of our consultation. Those responses are being uh, collated and interpreted by, by our officers, and we'll continue with that theme of constant public and member engagement uh, along, along the timeline outlined in the papers so that people have every opportunity to have their say on our emer emerging housing strategy. I'd like to pass out an invitation to all members to come and join us uh, in Northampton on the 10th of July when the Commonwealth Games uh, Baton Relay passes through the town, starting off at Mayfair and making its way through to the Northampton University campus. We only get half an hour of a Baton Relay here in Northampton and then the whole show moves swiftly on to its next destination in the East Midlands. But it is truly a momentous occasion uh, in the sporting uh, world uh, for the county town. There are some visitor numbers in the papers uh, for Northampton Museum. I'm pleased to report that we now have June's figures. They're 40% above uh, the, uh, the target set at the beginning of the year. And just to assure any members who have any doubts, those uh, targets at the beginning of the year were, uh, I think you could describe them as stretch targets. They weren't uh, under, uh, under anticipating uh, the numbers that we need to get through the museum in order to make it viable. And I uh, associate myself with the comments made by the chairman at the start of the meeting in welcoming the, the visit of the Duke of Gloucester this morning. Uh, finally, uh, I think it uh, shows the ambition and the, uh, the vision of our comms team that we now have a West Northamptonshire Council uh, TikTok uh, account. It's uh, vital that we uh, explore all forms of social media to reach out to different demographics. Uh, I don't have a TikTok account myself, um, but uh, I know that it reaches uh, parts, parts of West Northamptonshire that uh, the, the older forms of social media maybe don't. So uh, I think we need to thank our, our young graduates for putting that together. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Uh, we have various questions. The first question previously notified, Councillor Zoe Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, you mentioned in your report around the days of action and the enforcement fallout from the days of action. It's really brilliant that those have happened and I think a huge relief to the people in those areas. However, there is, are huge issues in almost every area, certainly within Northampton, of having illegal, things like illegal HMOs and illegal housing issues. And it's really important that those are tackled. I think the sheer amount of suspected illegal housing and issues in that area can't afford to wait for each area to have its day of action. So I'm wondering what other solutions are in the pipeline to deal quite urgently with this sense that residents have of being under siege by the number of illegally run properties or issues in their area and what we can do beyond the days of action to make sure that this is ongoing good practice. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor Brown would like to respond to that briefly. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, in addition to the ongoing uh, HMO um, working group that's looking into the wider issue, uh, I'm happy to say that we have a very active uh, enforcement team who, if 
suspected illegal HMOs are reported to West Northamptonshire Council will go out, visit the individual property and establish the, the true status of that property. Uh, we, ha we are currently taking through the courts a whole host of prosecutions against uh, illegal HMO landlords uh, and we'll, we'll continue to do so where we have the evidence. Thank you. Councillor Sally Beardsworth. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was reading about the library service, um, Councillor Brown, and the wonderful work that they did with the Ukrainian resettlement team. Um, and we, we, we undermess the value of libraries, don't we? How much they can actually help all communities. And therefore, I will ask you again, hopefully we can look at somewhere that we can move Kingsthorpe Library forward, because that is certainly some place that we need a hub there for the people of St. David's, Kingsop, Sunnyside, Obelisk, and the village. There's a huge area there that need a library and, um, and, and the work that they do. So I'm hoping you'll move this forward as quickly as you can. The second point I'd like to make is um, the government is now talking about um, moving forward on the right to buy on housing associations. I have great concerns about this because if you're selling a house at a discount rate and then you've got to build another one in its place, how can you afford to do that? And I'm really worried that, uh, and there is no mention, of course, of him moving on to actually allow people to buy who have lived long term in private landlords' accommodation. Um, and I just think it's unfair that it's always the social housing that seems to be getting hit uh, rather than the others. So I just wanted your opinion on that and whether we'd be going down that road if we can possibly avoid it. Thank, Thank Councillor Bisworth. Councillor Brown. Uh, I can confirm that uh, as portfolio holder, I've got no interest in participating in any government uh, pilot for uh, such a right to buy scheme. Um, I think uh, Councillor Beardsworth knows my views on right to buy. And certainly when it comes to extending that right to buy to private housing or housing that belongs to not-for-profit organisations such as registered providers, uh, I think that's an overstretch of government power and I, I don't support it. Um, before answering the question on Kingsthorpe Library, I must declare an interest that I've recently moved to Kingsthorpe. Um, and so it won't surprise Councillor Beersworth to know that um, not only have I continued to work with officers to uh, get the cooperation of Kingsthorpe Parish Council uh, to, uh, to look for alternative solutions for that library, but I'll continue to do so. Uh, every area should have a library. She mentions that we continue to underestimate their value. I certainly don't underestimate their value. They were hugely valuable, valuable to me growing up. I hope they'll be valuable to young people growing up everywhere across West Northamptonshire. Thank you, Councillor Brown. I, I do value libraries too, and this is my Library Plus card. I renewed my library the other day, and I have to say it's a fabulous resource, without a doubt. If anyone can work out how this is actually put together, it's amazing. I do like it. So I encourage you all to go along to your local library and pick one of these things up. Um, I went to the Central Library and Brixworth Library and Hunsbury Library, but that's just name dropping, so do feel free to try them all out. Support your local library. Councillor Roberts, you had a question. Thank you. Thank you. Chair. Um, thank you, Councillor Brown. I'm just going to take an opportunity um, to, to kind of thank you again for your positive responses to, to everything I've approached you, you with recently. Um, I know we, again, we don't always agree on everything, but certainly I get a positive approach and I really do appreciate that. Um, the, another request for you to take a positive approach on is obviously you will have appreciated the horrendous fire that occurred in my ward this week. And in fact, it's been an incredibly a difficult week for Northampton as far as its um, historic buildings or buildings are concerned um, with a rage of fire. So I would just want to thank Northamptonshire Fire and Rescue as well for the incredible work they did, but also a small nod um, to our highways team who were actually on site immediately and were dealing with the road closure and I had the pleasure to spend some time with late that evening. Um, but obviously in Far Cotton it was a, a significant heritage building that's been damaged as a result of the fire. Um, and I know that you've had some reach out from those in our heritage community already and I, I'd just really like to meet with you, you both, once it's safe to do so, um, on site, both yourself and, and Councillor Nunn, to really have a serious conversation with Network Rail and others about what we may do to salvage anything at all from, from this building um, and to see what else we can do that maybe makes that area a much more focal point for, for Far Cotton. It really brought it home to me how that disused area of the railway could be really brought into a, a much better community use. So uh, just a, a plea for you to have that conversation and to join me in thanking the Fire and Rescue and, as I say, our local highways teams. 
And then just on a slightly more negative note, on the, the housing enforcement stuff and the housing actions, I, I really appreciate the days of action and I appreciate it when the multi-agency or the multi-parts of the authority get together and coordinate those events. I think it's really good. But I'm just not sure they're having significant enough of impact because we're not then following through on additional actions. But also in addition to that, we were once told on the borough that to cover the H number of illegal HMOs we have registered or the number that are suspected, it would take 30 years because of the numbers for our current enforcement teams to get around and actually take that prosecution. It would take 30 years. Um, obviously, as a, as a budget amendment, we suggested some increase to that team. I just really think we need to look at our enforcement teams, our planning teams, and I'll speak about that later, later on, but we really need to, to support and, and give as much as we can to those teams so that we can give the residents what they need. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Um, Councillor Brown, would like to respond to that briefly? Uh, firstly, Chairman, thank you to Councillor Roberts for her kind words. Uh, I think she's uh, uh, an opposition member who uh, really does embrace cross-party working and does so uh, constructively. Very, very happy to, to meet with her uh, on site to, to see how we can approach uh, any potential uh, recovery of the heritage assets uh, in her ward. Uh, and I certainly join with her in commending the work of the, the very brave men and women in the Fire and Rescue Service and everything that they do uh, for, for our communities in West Northamptonshire. On the housing enforcement and the days of action, I, I know from my dialogue with officers that there is significant follow-up. Whether it's sufficient is always going to be a matter for debate, uh, but where Councillor Roberts or anyone else can identify areas that they feel that that follow-up has been insufficient, uh, I'll work with them to, uh, to pursue that further. Uh, in terms of the 30 years to investigate the number of allegations and take them through the courts, it's the first time I've heard that figure. I've no idea if it's accurate or not. I know that when uh, members of the public or when councillors have come to me with suspected HMOs uh, and I've passed that, that, passed that information on to officers, they've been follow, followed up very quickly and I've had a blow-by-blow -blow account of uh, officers' assessment of the situation. So, uh, yeah, happy to, to have that dialogue, maybe at the same time as we're discussing uh, the, the heritage assets in her ward and beyond. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Stone, you had a final question. Thank you. Um, libraries first. I... Um, mentor a number of women uh, who don't speak English. Um, in fact, I teach them English. And I took a group of them to Central Library recently with their babies uh, for rhyme time, which was uh, wonderful. The library staff were wonderful. There wasn't room for them. So these are marginalised women who felt even further marginalised because there wasn't room for them because it's a really loved service and um, many more people want it than they have got provision for there. I stopped and, and watched the staff delivery and they were just absolutely lovely. And for babies growing up in England whose parents don't speak English, this is a, just a delicious and wonderful opportunity to get those babies speaking English. So I just want to flag that up to you that we need more resource in our libraries, and uh, I'll just leave that with you. In terms of the multi-agency um, days of action, we've had one in a really blighted part of Castle, and the days of action and the follow-up were second to none, loved it, me and all the other councillors were there with it. That area is still the area with the most antisocial behaviour, the most fly-tipping, the most criminal activity, uh, where women and girls don't feel safe. Nothing structural has changed. So the same conditions, the same reasons why that was an area that needed to have that multi-agency team in still exist and are still producing the same things. The multi-agency work is really important. It is not sufficient. We need to go right underneath to see what is producing those problems. And we need to do it much more quickly because frankly, as a councillor, I am absolutely sick to death of reporting the same things in the same areas week in, week out, and we've got to do something about it. We need more enforcement, but we need to look at what structurally is producing those problems. I wanted to ask you another question in relation to HIMOs. Do you think it's time 
that we had a register of HIMO landlords who are councillors and who are council officers. Thank you, Councillor Stone. Uh, Councillor Brown, would you like just to um, respond to that? Thank you. Yep, uh, th thank you, Chairman. Um, on the first couple of points, I didn't exactly detect a, a particular question from, uh, from Councillor Stone. Central Library um, is not viable to, to, to extend that. It's a heritage building. Uh, it may even, may even be listed. Uh, happy to work with uh, Councillor Stone or anyone else, though, on seeing if there's alternative uh, venues that have more room to, to provide an adequate, uh, an adequate service of that nature. Um, I think in terms of the antisocial behaviour issues, that obviously falls within uh, Councillor Smith's portfolio. I'll happily start, start a dialogue with him to see if further work can be done with the police and other partners to, uh, to, to tackle that sort of antisocial behaviour in Castle Ward. And in terms of landlord registration, uh, we treat everyone equally, regardless of whether they are uh, an officer, a councillor, whoever else. Obviously, if you're a councillor, we have to complete our registers of interests. We have to declare if we have... Uh, land or buildings that we own uh, in the West Northamptonshire area, and I trust that all members comply with that requirement. Thank Councillor Brown. Uh, Councillor Rebecca Breeze. Just remind you, have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so, further to my report, um, some updates. So, challenging times continue in our planning department with the volume of applications that are being received, as well as a national shortage of planners who are available for permanent. Um, posts, creating additional pressure, both in terms of uh, deciding planning applications and in filling posts. We've had in post for most of, for the for the last month, Mr. Colin Walker, as the interim assistant director of planning and development management, and he has in a short time developed a number of work streams to help us continue in the work of an integrated and successful planning department. On Tuesday evening, I chaired a planning policy committee, which started to see some of the really meaty material that's going to be coming forward over the next few months re relating to planning and policy. Two items that are of particular note for members. The first, for members of the South, um, the South Local Planning Area, we approved the draft employment site supplementary planning guidance for consultation. I would encourage uh, members and their parish councils to respond and I did assure our public speaker on that item that there is no implicit, uh, implicit acceptance of all the points and all, the, all the, um, the points raised in the draft document and the committee will be open to the results of the consultation. The other um, major item was noting the um, position of this uh, draft strategic plan. Uh, the committee noted that there were 2,000 responses to the consultation. Um, there was an 800-page uh, appendix, which I'm sure some members might like to read to see the, the range of responses. Um, I think members will be pleased to hear that the committee approved the um, proposal that the plan period be shortened to 2,041, which is a 15-year plan period and in line with uh, the accepted norms. Um, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Breeze. We have a few questions. Councillor Purser, Bob Purser, first of all. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Breeze, if you can just release your microphone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, we note that the Northampton local pro plan is making good progress, and that's very much to be welcomed. We've got the HIMO working group. We're looking at planning issues there. We're con I'm concerned that um, if we want to make amendments to the local plan, it's going to be very difficult. Do you have any view on whether that will be impossible or whether there will be opportunities for us to make recommended changes if we find the evidence to that effect? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Through you, uh, my view that making changes to the Northampton local plan at this stage would be well nigh impossible. The um, examiners have made their suggested modifications, which, as we discussed at the planning policy committee on Tuesday, 
are actually instructions to the um, uh, authority to make amendments. If we change anything substantial like HIMO policy, it effectively undoes all the work done and will take us back several steps and delay delivery of the Northampton local plan by not just months, but I suspect a couple of years. So much as that's regrettable, I, I fear that that is the case. Thank you, Councillor Breeze. Okay, uh, we have Councillor Rosie Humphreys. Question. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Breeze, for your report. I've just got three quick questions for you. Uh, you mentioned the challenges in, uh, as regards planning vacancies and Mr. Walker's now in post. Um, I understand that there were 58 applications for eight vacancies uh, which, which were um, uh, uh, circulated recently. Um, can you give us any reassurance that uh, most of those eight posts have found suitable candidates from those 58 applications? That's my first question. Do, do you want the rest of my questions or do you want not to? Would you like to answer that first? Thank you. Uh, if you'd like to bring them f all forward, please, Councillor Humphreys, and then we'll ask okay. Councillor Breeze right. to respond. Right. Uh, Thank you. That's the first question. Uh, just turning to the annual report, I just wanted your uh, view on the uh, rise of planning appeals in the uh, quarter of four, uh, both the, ri the rise in appeals and the rise in successful appeals. Um, is that something of concern to you? And uh, finally, at a recent uh, members' planning update, um, I, I believe members were told that Mr. Walker was uh, looking into the issue of uh, SIL and Section 106 payments um, outstanding from Northampton Borough Council. Uh, do, do you have any update on that, please? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Breeze. Uh, Sorry, Councillor Roberts. I think, oh, your microphone is... Right, okay, Councillor Breeze, do go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks for the, um, the work of the planning department and the HR department. There were a substantial number of um, applicants for the vacant posts. There have been a number of successful um, uh, appointments made. Uh, appoint, um, offers are out at the moment, uh, awaiting response. Uh, of, of the 58 applications, once they were whittled down, I think there were 16 um, interviewable uh, applicants, um, as is, is the way with this, though, that um, some of the successful applicants are, in fact, uh, already working for the authority, and so that creates um, more vacancies below. But yes, there have been a, a number of successful applicants, but every week the rotation amongst planning officers goes on, so you know, we appoint some, others leave for various reasons. Uh, it's still a very difficult environment, and I wouldn't pre pretend otherwise. Um, on the um, planning appeals, I believe that that's, I wouldn't say cyclical, but we have periods where then we, we lose more uh, or where applicants are successful. So, no, I don't have a particular view. Um, I haven't been briefed on a particular issue, and I'm not aware of a particular issue uh, in, in that area, um, but I will... Um, keep an eye on it, and if necessary, we will you know, look at the outcomes. So thank you. And on SIL and Section 106, yes, there is an issue on the SIL and sec Section 106. Uh, it's one of Colin Walker's work streams. Uh, more officers have been applied to it. It's a, a very big job. Uh, it's going to be probably another month before they have a notion as to the, um, the, scope, of the scope of the issue in terms of uh, how big an issue it is, and it's going to take three or four months, I think, to work through. Thank you, Councillor Brees. We have approximately seven more reports to come through, and I know we have another speaker who'd like to, well, a couple of questions, Councillor Brees, but please do try and keep your questions brief if you'd like to hear all seven further reports. We're on about 20 minutes left on this item. Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rebecca. I know I've emailed you, you personally, and I know you have said you'll get back to me. You haven't yet. I'm not, but hopefully we can catch up at the end of this meeting because there is obviously a, an issue with a planning application that has been made or for prior approval in my ward at the moment. And given what's happened in the East Hunsbury ward and the and the, the mast going up there that that shouldn't have done, um, I, I really need to have an answer, and I'm not getting an answer for anybody. And I. I would say, worryingly for me, the for the first time ever, I've had my email that I sent to planning 
forwarded to member inquiries to then acknowledge me to then get a response back. I've never had that happen to me before. Planning are usually very, very helpful to, to provide me with a response. So that, that worries me. There's something up there. I, I, I need an answer on the deadline because my residents are really concerned that something's going to go wrong. So if you could do that, that would be fantastic. Um, and the, the Northampton Borough Sillum 106 investigation that's currently happening, can we make sure that that also covers a, a list and a register of all current 106 money that's been received? so that we know where money can actually be invested. Because there was an, is an issue with a particular area in my ward where we received the money in 2014 and it's never been spent on the area at all. So if we can include that as part of the review, I'd really appreciate it. Councillor Bereese, I'd like to respond, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, we, we, we did communicate later on Tuesday oh, really? night. Um, and uh, in, in terms of masts and uh, prior approval, it's a very strict 56 day. And unusually for planning, day one is the day you receive the application, not the following day, which is, I understand, um, one of the major causes of the East Hunsbury debacle, as I described it. So uh, a new um, um, way of working has been issued to officers that they have to follow when dealing with prior notification um, of masts. So I will check that that uh, the application you're referring to is being processed appropriately, but uh, East Hunsbury did receive a full explanation and apology, both from uh, Jim Newton, who was the assistant director at the time, and indeed I wrote to them as well and explained my, my um, dissatisfaction with the service that they had received. Uh, in terms of SIL and 106, uh, that is something that I have asked explicitly of officers, is that there is a, a way of members accessing easily outstanding SIL and 106 monies going forward. It's not, um, it's not something they're concentrating on now. I believe they've got to get this issue resolved, but that is part of a work stream, yes. Thank you, Councillor Breeze. <laughs> Councillor McCaw, do you have a final question on this item? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you, Rebecca. Um, on the uh, pr proposed draft of the SPD for the um, AL allocations in their own toaster, uh, firstly, will you agree to have a meeting with all of the members that could be possibly affected by any of those AL um, ones? And I'm also thinking about the roads leading down to and away from them, not just the, the members where the, the boxes are being proposed. The, the draft uh, SPD um, has taken, in my view, a wrong reference point of the Swan Valley um, and the, the big, large boxes that sit along the M1 as the starting point for what is large and then working that back. Do you think that is actually the right reference point and the right starting point for medium, small, and large, and, and, and uh, particularly in, in the locations being done? And uh, finally, what um, due diligence was done by the council when they chose Barton Wilmore as the um, uh, consultants to draft and write the report? As a quick look on their website, will show some of their clients include IM Properties and DHL, who IM Properties have an application for AL3 and DHL want AL1. Thank you. Councillor Breeze, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor McCord. Uh, on the SPD, the reference point of Swan Valley, was, uh, which is, um, is that junction 15? A. A. Sorry. 15A. I, okay, uh, was raised as being uh, a reference point that wasn't acknowledged. Sorry, Councillor McCord, we, we couldn't catch that. I said they're going to be bigger at 15. <laughs> but that point was acknowledged and uh, work is going to be done on, on, on that during the consultation period because there will be another consultation period further down the line. Uh, and in terms of the small, medium, large, that was also referenced because the, um, the large caused some significant alarm and they, we are aiming for small and medium. But if you've got small and medium, there's obviously a large. So uh, the existence of large has been acknowledged, but that is not our intention, to have large units. They're small and medium. But by, just by having small and medium, it follows that there's going to be large. What is large? So we're... we're that is being acknowledged and 
before the document comes out for consultation, that should be um, altered in the draft document as well. And did you have a third point? Oh yeah, sorry, it was, um, it was um, a meeting for all South members. More than happy for all South members to come to um, a meeting on the SPD if that's, if that's what they wish. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Councillor Breeze. Okay, uh, we have seven reports to complete now, and uh, page 19's report, Councillor Baker's unfortunately unable to be here this evening, but Councillor Nunn, I believe you're taking the report? So I'm just happy to ask people to read the report, but if, if there's any questions to be answered, I'll do my best to either answer them or take those questions away. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much indeed. Okay, we have a couple of questions that have come through. Uh, Councillor uh, Muna Kelly, please, first question. Yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, my, my question basically um, was really quick. Um, just wanted to um, highlight one thing. Um, to find out what is the, do we know what the 10 primarily, um, the 10 top, sorry, the top 10 primary and secondary schools in, um, that we have, and at least um, which ones are not performing based on the offset um, report? And the other thing that I wanted to ask was as well, um, perhaps if you can relate this message to um, Councillor Baker, if she has any sort of meetings with schools, particularly within our ward, in the St. George ward, if we could be signposted and perhaps come along with her. Thank you. And Councillor Nunn, would you like all the questions together? Would that be easy? Uh, yeah, happy to. I mean, certainly yeah, on, that, okay, on, on, that, on that point, let me just say that I, I don't know the detail of the top ten. Possibly Louisa Fowler may answer. Is, she, is it Louisa Sigling? Oh, well done, Louisa. Louisa's assistant cabinet member. Um, and certainly on the visits, no problem. Fiona at visits at least one school a week. Uh, Louisa. Yeah, I think when it comes to the Ofsted reports, Fiona's completely on top of those and she receives copies of all of them. But you've got to remember that Ofsted go in and visit schools at different times of the year. So who is in the top 10 and who isn't changes depending on when Ofsted visit. Of course, at the end of this year, for the first time, we're actually going to get some accurate exam data, and that will help us to understand how schools are performing in the county. And Councillor Baker and I do both regularly do school visits, and I'll make sure that we set one up in your ward and that you're invited along. Thank you. Councillor Kelly, you had a point there? Sorry, yeah, I just wanted to ask in terms of the, uh, the reporting, will that be available? Will, will, is that available to councillors or on the website? Where is that? Sorry. Councillor Fowler. So if you go on to the schools in your ward, their latest Ofsted report will always be there. So they have to publish their latest Ofsted report, but it comes out about two months after Ofsted visit the school because it has to go back to the school, the school argue, it's a long process. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Harry Barrett. Uh, thank you. A um, couple of things for me. Um, Report lacks a lot of detail. Uh, it's very fluffy, looks nice, uh, just lacks key, key stats and key information really that it would be really useful to have. I'm going to focus primarily um, over our move to SEND and I know that the area is, uh, has been in a crisis area over, over the previous few years. I know steps have been taken to improve that. However, when we're moving our educational psychologist provision to an external provider, it always, the alarm bells start ringing, okay, when we're looking at sending that big pot of money out to those external providers, what assurances have we got about service, okay, so they're the most needy students, and I know there are significant backlogs, but my, my big concern there is how, what, when, and where, it just lacks detail, it's telling us that, that's great, we know that, but how, what, where, and when, those key facts, we need that, we need that around this table in here to know. Secondly, moving through from that, there's lots of talk there about children missing from education, and I know there are a substantial amount in the, in the authority through my day job. However, you guys, we don't see that in this report. We have accurate and reliable data. Fabulous. Show us. Where is it? Very fluffy, nice, 
reading reports are great, but when they lack key detail, it's not as useful as it might have been. So can we have those, that accurate and reliable data, please? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. Um, Councillor Fowler or Councillor Nunn, would you like to take that question? Um, yeah, I think we have this information. We don't always put everything that you might anticipate you particularly want to know in a report. But email us, we'll be glad, we'll be glad to provide it. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And we have uh, Councillor Lisa Samiotis as a final speak on this point. Um, I think I've seen a written reply. I'm happy with that. Thank you very much. Okay, Councillor David Smith's report. Um, he's not here this evening. Um, any questions at all to the leader on this? Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple of um, colleagues here. Councillor Hack, who's uh, got a question first of all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if um, the Cabinet member, uh, Councillor David Smith, is aware of the, um, the issue with um, the licensing team. There seems to be a problem with the licensing team. Um, I don't know whether it's to do with the staffing issue or the system itself. A lot of taxi drivers are struggling to make their end meets due to lack of work and having to wait longer than usual for their badge and taxi plate renewal. Hence, they are being pushed, to, pushed into poverty. Can, the, can the, uh, the leader of the council convey the message or ask him to reassure us that uh, that is not the case and um, their taxi and the badge uh, renewal will be issued in a timely manner? Thank you. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Councillor Nunn? Uh, yeah, happy to take that up. I mean, I think generally, um, really keen to support all businesses. We know taxi drivers have suffered. Our fundamental principle, however, as regulation is to keep people safe in taxis. That's priority number one. Uh, but if there is any slowness of service, happy to take it up. But if you have some specific examples, Councillor, those would be helpful to help us take that to the trail. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor? So, through you, Chair, I'll be more than happy to um, uh, pass on the, those um, um, inquiries. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Smith. Zoe Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm really good in David Smith's report to read of the Pride event in town, and I was there myself briefly. Really fantastic event, something that we need to be really proud of. And the same is true of the I'm Still Me conference, which is fantastic and has been running for years. One of the things that came up at the I'm Still Me conference that was really important from our young people who were really brave in being prepared to stand up and to talk to a wide variety of professionals and counsellors was how important gender neutral language is to them in schools and how key that is to them feeling like they're respected and that they're being dealt with professionally and they're being understood. So it's really important to me that we take that into account in our own conduct, we consider that in our own language that we use in terms of our officers and our professionals and our staff, we're using that kind of language we're hoping they do. In my professional life, we're really encouraged to use gender neutral language. And I understand at the last meeting, there was some degree of disrespect or mockery for the idea of gender neutral language. And that might seem like it's being targeted at counselors. I think actually it's something that ends up being targeted at those young people who were really courageous in feeling able to speak up and say how important it is for them. And so I need to sort of know from us as a council how we're going to hold ourselves to the same high standards and the same important understanding of that language that we actually expect from our officers, from our staff and from our professional partners. I know that there are councillors across the chamber who are really good at this, who have really learned over the years why that's so important, have put the effort into the training and the learning that they've done with members of, for example, the LGBT plus community. So I'd like a commitment from the council that we actually listen to and respect that our young people, our professional partners and our staff, and that we're prepared to do what we ask of the people we work with. Thank you, Councillor Nunn. Would like to respond to that briefly? Uh, you're very happy just to make brief comments. Uh, but I think the, the second part about gender neutral language, you say we did have a discussion. People have their own clear views. I think what we can thank uh, Councillor Smith for doing just there is highlighting perhaps another aspect of this debate that we may not all have been aware of. I don't think now 
here is the time to suddenly make policy that we enforce on people. The discussion needs to roll on, but I thought your comments were very thought-provoking in terms of where they were from and who the young people who had made those comments. So let's continue that consideration. Uh, and just always a comment on pride. Um, th th many people at this council, again, had a lot to do with organising that, both staff and councillors, and big congratulations to many of them. It was wonderful, wasn't it? Twice as big, I reckon, uh, as, it, as it was uh, last year. So something to be proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And I'll, I'll uh, echo that comment. I went to Pride as well on behalf of the Council. I have to say it was a tremendous event and very well attended here in the uh, Northampton Market Square. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Roberts. No? Okay, thank you. Councillor Daniel Stone. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to comment on the community safety strategy. Um, We've had a community safety partnership working with partners in WNC for two years now, uh, including the transitional year, and before that in predecessor authorities. And yet crime and disorder has gone up, particularly in Northampton, and far exceeds the national average for England. And so my question there is, I know how diligent the officers are. This is not a comment on the officers. There is something going wrong in the state of Northampton, uh, uh, in particular, that needs addressing in terms of crime. And it doesn't help, to be honest, that we only have 14 wardens uh, for the whole of West North Hants now, because it's often wardens who are privy to local intelligence. Local people feel safe talking to the wardens, and the wardens pick up what is going on. We only have 11 operational wardens. We used to only have 13 operational wardens for the whole of Northampton. That was never enough. At the minute, we only have 11 operational wardens for the whole of West North Ants. It's not working, and it certainly isn't working for Northampton, and it isn't working for Castle. We have a huge crime rate in Castle, and actually, it would be really good if we went back to a previous practice at the borough where the crime rates were published ward for ward, so councillors were on top of that information. It would be very, very helpful indeed if we could do that. And Councillor Stone, uh, would you like to respond to that, Councillor Stone? Yeah, okay. uh, well, I need to say uh, points, points noted, I think, and, and I think you're absolutely, um, uh, absolutely right. I, 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 value the partnership that goes around community safety and many of the activities that we at the borough were involved in when we were there and that WNC has picked up and, and built on. Wardens are an excellent thing. We'd like to see them across the whole of the West as well. Um, and, and yeah, so therefore fully, fully support and happy at any time to discuss any other ideas. Certainly I am and, and David would be on community safety. Yeah, thank you. Okay, maybe that's a point to pick up uh, from the meeting. That'll be useful. Thank you. Keith, uh, Councillor Keith Holden, Delamere. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, just speaking about the Knife Angel um, project and a uh, really fantastic um, um, opportunity to highlight the issues of uh, violence and um, aggression in our community. And I'm really proud to have been part of um, working across so many different organisations to make it happen after a three-year today. Um, really, really good to see that there basically uh, there is going to be a post-evaluation report and, and I've played my part in putting into that. I think one of the key things is really making sure that we've listened to the conversations that were had around that statue from parents, from young people, from all the cross-organisational um, working that really, really did help to highlight and bring together our community in trying to find alternatives to the county lines gangs, the gangs and the violence that are damning and affecting many of our communities. If we don't play our part as a council in that multi-agency, voluntary community sector um, conversation about resourcing um, our, our youth provision, we will continue to have that blight in our community. And I, I really do hope that the lessons of that partnership working from the visit are, are really understood and the positive outworking of that continue. Um, the Daventry event, for example, was, was brilliant, the, the way the Town Council and Daventry and the, the West North Hants and all the different organisations worked together to 
uh, really provide alternatives and information to young people in Daventry. It, it was a prime example of that good. And I just thank the officers for the hard work they put in for the fortnight. And uh, I, I really, really do hope that we can build on the legacy of that Knife Angel visit. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Nunn, would you like to respond? I don't think there's anything to comment on. I just to agree with what Keith says. An excellent uh, event, and yeah, let's squeeze every drop of feedback out of it we can. Thank, Thank you. you. Points noted. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, just Chair. Just a reminder, sorry, we, ha we have uh, four more speakers on this item. We have five more items, as in five more Cabinet reports, approximately eight minutes left on this item as per the Constitution. So just bear, bear in mind, if you can keep your questions brief, then it will be helpful. Uh, thank you, Chair. Mindful of that, I won't take up any further time at the meeting. I'll uh, approach Councillor Smith direct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Humphreys. Uh, Councillor Jonathan Harris. Thank you, uh, Chair. A couple of points, if I may. The um, report from Councillor Smith mentions the government levelling up uh, department allocating fund for domestic abuse. It doesn't specify how much. And I wondered whether we could have an indication as to whether crime data is telling us whether domestic abuse is reducing, stabilizing, or on an upwards trajectory. Uh, I have a second question, if I may. Um, the report also refers to um, the Afghans being housed in bridging hotels, which I believe the numbers have increased, in fact, from 200 to 250. And my question is relating to how many of those families um, are still there from the original airlift, which was last summer, and what plans are in place to seek permanent accommodation for them. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nunn? Yeah, I mean, I think on both those. Should I get a written answer from you uh, for, for, for David? It, it, quite specific, some of the things you said I jotted, but all, e email as well, Jonathan, if you get a minute. That might clarify precisely. Happy to get you the exact Thank detail. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Al-Wahabi. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I would like to thank the Diversity Forum for hosting the Refugee Week event at the Guildhall. It's always a pleasure to work with Councillor Hill, who gets who just gets it when it comes to refugee and diversity communities. I would also like to thank the resettlement team, the Red Cross and the DWP for running stalls and the event and all the other stalls holders. In particular, I would like to thank the music school for working with our refugee youth to produce a song where it says, Freedom is peace. I would also like to thank refugees who give their personal testimony. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, points noted. I don't know if there's anything you'd like to further add. Thank you, Councillor Dunn. Councillor Sue Sharps, last speaker on this item. I'm interested to see that community safety strategy is mentioned, and uh, in a good way. Uh, not in a bad way. <laughs> um, it states here that we're working on a strategy moving forward, tackling crime. But it always mentions Northampton, as it later does about antisocial behaviour. Can I have assurances that the rest of the county will be included in this and in all reports moving forward? Um, not a long list, but just that all areas of our county are included. When I became a councillor, I didn't just become a councillor of Brackley, I am a councillor of this council. So I represent everywhere as well. So I would hope that everything is represented in our reports, all areas, all is fair. Um, I'm not gonna do anything else here because I'm gonna send a very long email. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor I will just comment just briefly. I think one of the marvellous things we're starting to see with this council is we are sharing good practice across all of our areas. Um, every report, unless it refers to a very specific item that is just in one particular area, then it should otherwise talk about the whole of West North Ants, and I'd wholly agree with that. I'm glad you've had to further comfort in the work that I do where it is relevant to particular problems we have or hot issues at the moment or, uh, you know, the general casework stuff that comes, I'm spending more of my time focused on the other parts that I'm less familiar with, which is the Daventry uh, areas and villages and indeed the South Northampton. So our focus is on all of those. Uh, and where there is a mistake in any report that just says Northampton where it shouldn't, we'll make sure we try and clean that up. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Lister, we have just enough time for your report. Thank you. Two minutes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to run down the things that we are doing um, in, 
in West Northampton at the moment because we are doing quite a lot. Um, Northampton Bike Park, so the, that has started this week and it's carrying on com for completion in late summer. Spawn Arcade, Jenkins Weir, has been appointed as a contractor and that's going to be knocking down the old co-op site, um, which has laid dormant for many years. Um, Leveling Up Fund, four projects assessed. So we've got Western Fable, Health and Wellbeing, Hub, Extra Ask for Money, um, later on, so I won't dwell on that one, but we've got um, other projects not developed enough will move forward um, or be developed to be able to move forward at later bids and just say we are committed to working closer with members moving forward to ensure any all the members are involved in future bids. Um, Northampton Market Square planning application has been submitted. Um, Old Black Line work, work started in June. Water Meadows toaster phase two is completed and phase three is moving forward to remove the damaged weir. Um, UK Shared Prosperity, we've been allocated 5.4 million to develop Pride in Place, in re which replaces EU funding. Um, the investment plan being developed with input for, from community groups, members and MPs. You should have had an email from Hatch um, for you to contribute your ideas towards this. Um, we've also been allocated 1.9 million in multiply funding to increase adult numeracy. Um, we've been supporting local businesses, as we'd expect, which is our, one of our high priorities. Um, we've held two procurement events, giving help to local businesses on how to tender for work with WNC. And we've also sponsored the Business of the Year Award at the Northamptonshire Business Awards 2022. Um, we're supporting local employment and making sure residents and employers fill local vacancies with local people. The economy team attended Brackley Community Hub, where they offered free employment support to residents. Whilst there, they met with Ukrainian refugees looking for employment, help and advice. We're also supporting the local visitor economy. We're, uh, we've had a marketing campaign promoting English Tourism Week in May. Um, we're celebrating attractions. Um, Reads to Loves of West North Ants, including, including comms across social media and the creation of a West North Ants TikTok account. Plans are continuing for Heritage Open Days in 2022. We're also about to launch a new Explore West North Ants app funded by the Welcome Back Fund to promote businesses long term. It will be launched later in the year, but it's being promoted to businesses currently to upload information. Thank you, Councillor Lister. And I will allow one question because we have just exceeded the 60 minutes as per constitution, but I'll allow the original question because Councillor Sally Bearsworth did pre notify the council she had a question to ask Councillor Lister. So please do feel free to ask that question. I shall be, um, I shall be extremely kind because a lot of the questions that were asked in the call in last night. So I will say thank you for the, attending the call in and giving us the information we needed. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank you, Councillor Lister. Thank you all. And uh, we do try and, and circulate those reports obviously in advance. They are all there. So if you have any questions, you can ask them outside the meeting. Please feel free to do so uh, by emails or by conversations with cabinet leaders, and I'm sure that Councillor Nunn would take any uh, details as well that if you haven't been able to raise them with cabinet members who are not here this evening. Okay. Um, are you happy to receive the reports from cabinet members and records of the decisions of the cabinet meetings held in April, May, and June 22? Can I ask for the assent of all councillors present? Thank you. Councillor Sharps, you have a question? Thank you. Um, I wish to um, speak. Uh, to Daniel Lister in the last um, report because during your report it was very thorough but it did point, uh, did, you did fail to point out one thing that we ran a pilot at Brackley for, to do with the, uh, your team and you forgot to mention it. Um, if at all possible could you include that? It was extremely um, successful and your team were fantastic so I would like that included if possible. Thank you. Points, points and praise noted and I'm sure Councillor Lister will, will take that back to the team as well. Thank you Councillor Sharps. Okay, item eight. We still have quite a lot on the agenda this evening. Um, I will invite Councillor Jonathan Nunn to introduce the report and move the proposal. It's for the integrated care system and future role of the health and wellbeing board. You have up to five minutes, Councillor Nunn. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Chairman. And I can't tell you how disappointed Councillor Matt Golby is to not be here this evening. He has sadly had a COVID positive test, so didn't want to come and uh, uh, take any sort of risk with us quite rightly. But he's worked so hard on this and, and, and therefore he's very disappointed. Um, the, the first thing to say, I think, is this is a huge opportunity for our health and, health and social care system to work much more closely than ever. Um, integrated care systems statutorily come into being as of the 1st of July, which of course is tomorrow. Um, there's been a huge amount of work across our local system to prepare us for this point in time, and everybody involved seems to be totally committed to making our ICS work. My 
feedback I pick up is that is not the case at all of them around the country. So I think we're locally in good shape. Obviously, the objective of the ICS, put simply, is to work much more collaboratively, particularly on the wider determinants of health and inequalities. This is going to be done by working in local area partnerships with all stakeholders uh, that will focus on key priorities in each of the local areas. It's going to reflect the living your best life ambitions uh, that we have at this council for people who live in West uh, Northamptonshire. It's also underpinned by a number of key priorities in the West Northamptonshire uh, corporate plan. Matt's always said to me that when he's as part of the, uh, you know, the health committees and so on, well, he always asks, what does this really mean for the residents he represents? And often that's a very valid challenge because it's not always clear in some of these things uh, what exactly the benefits are in some of the pre previous strategic plans. However, there's a lot of confidence around this particular plan uh, because there's a clear thread of clarity that runs from the high strategic level through this piece of work right down to our communities and back up again. The working of the ICS is themed around four key collaboratives, na namely Elective, which is planned care, uh, ICANN, which is our system working to improve the flow of patients, often el elderly, from hospital, mental health and the combined focus uh, of services, uh, and then finally children and young people. Now, much of the governance of the ICS sounds quite complex, basically because it is. But if you refer to the slide at the back of the pack appended to the report, it kind of makes an attempt to describe to you how our ICS fits together all on one page, the structure, uh, if you like. The diagram shows the Integrated Care Board and the Integrated Care Partnership sitting at the system level, and the Health and Wellbeing Boards are both North and West North Ants at place level. The roles, functions, and representation of each uh, of, the integrated, of the Integrated Care Board and the Integrated Care Partnership, as well as the Health and Wellbeing Boards, are described in the report and for information. Anna Earnshaw, our Chief Executive, is our appointed representative on the Integrated Care Board, and that's the same for the Chief Exec uh, in the North. Uh, all of these flow down to a community level into our local area partnerships. One of the great things about our ICS is the geography is simple. We have a single ICS covering just Northamptonshire. We're only one of 42 integrated care systems nationally, and we're surrounded by five locally, but most of the other ICS cover a very complex ge geography, often straddling a number of councils and a number of health systems. So really, this gives us a great advantage through the familiarity of our system partners and the single focus on West North Ants and North North Ants as two places within the system. One question that's raised frequently, how do we make the geography work where we may, may have people living on the edge of the county and access to services is often across borders, such as Oxfordshire and Leicestershire? This is a really important question. Uh, please be assured that it is absolutely on the radar. There's work to be done, but this is one of the major work streams to make sure that we get this right. The really exciting point uh, for us as members is the creation of the local area partnerships which again you can see appended at the back of the report. Um, taking West Northampton as a place we've divided into communities, uh, first of all Northampton, then secondly the Toaster and South North Vance area, because this is based around the footprint of the NHS uh, GP localities. Um, I, I, at a neighbourhood level, in both the North and West neighbourhoods will comprise of clusters, and of course we're going to have um, each uh, ward sending one ward councillor to each of these uh, localities. Those of you who came along to the member session will be familiar with this. It was a while, uh, a while back, and it, you will have seen what it looks like, a really super, the really superb data that is now becoming available in terms of um, patient and people data. It's really giving us an insight into how we can drill very carefully into the needs of each uh, area. I think finally, if Mac was here this evening, he'd say that the system uh, we have ready to step into the new world and grab the opportunity uh, this represents is really good for us here in West North Ants. He would also say uh, that uh, we in West North Ants, along with our colleagues in the North, should aspire to develop our ICS into an exemplar of best practice, because that's the opportunity that we're lucky enough to have. This aspiration is full. If this, uh, this aspiration is, is fulfilled, uh, will subsequently mean the very best possible outcomes for the residents we all serve. The recommendations you'll see are about updating so that councillors are aware, um, clarifying and, and so on. It's also clarifying the one member per ward. Fundamentally, uh, approval of this says we're really off and running and we're getting somewhere with this. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Nunn. Spot on time. Okay, Councillor Adam Brown, you have three minutes. Would you like to second the proposal? I second the report, Mr Chairman, but I reserve my right to speak, if I may. Thank you very much. Noted. 
Um, as our members of council wish to comment on this item, uh, we have uh, Councillor Roberts. Your name is down first. Thank you. If you'd like to speak, please do depress the button on your panel just for momentarily, and I'll record that. Thank you. Have three minutes. Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you for, for removing the report. And I, I truly believe Matt will be disappointed, or sorry, Councillor Goldby will be disappointed that he wasn't here to speak, um, because I, I share and applaud um, his, his feeling and enthusiasm for, for this process. I spoke at Cabinet on the item, so you won't be surprised at my commentary, Councillor Nunn, because I do attend the meetings and I do read my papers, you know. Um, and I think that's important to know. Um, I'm privileged to chair the, the ICANN Task and Finish Group um, as part of the scrutiny, which also leads into this ICS programme. Uh, and I truly believe that if we make this a multi-agency, locality working partnership with these local area partnership boards, then we've got a, a, a real possibility of making a, a significant difference to, to our residents. But I do have a couple of reservations. Councillor Goldby's already aware of them. I think council should be. We, if, if this turns into local area partnership boards where it's who shouts the loudest gets the most, that's going to have a significant um, impact on the areas that get, say, a centralised hub for services. Um, and we need to make sure that doesn't happen. We need to make sure, I'm afraid, that there is no privatisation by the back door of our health services as a result of the local area partnership boards taking place, because there is a, a possibility for that, and that is a general concern of the white paper overall on this process. So we must make sure that doesn't happen. Members who are part of those local area partnership boards and who feel the, that they, they can be as part of the process have, have got to be really clear about how significant of a job how big of a job, sorry, this is going to be and how important it's going to be for residents. And as it's only one member per ward for, as part of the partnerships that are made up, there's got to be a reporting mechanism and a way that those who aren't part of it have that reporting back to understand what's going on on those partnerships. So I commend the work the officers have done. We're further ahead of many other ICSs. We're further behind some. I think we can learn from that. But overall, really support the, the approach and appreciate the way in which officers and Councillor Goldby has, uh, has corresponded with me again on this particular subject. So, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bedsworth, you had a question. It's not a question, Chair, so much as a, as a comment as well as a question. Um, I think this is probably the most exciting report we've got before us tonight. It's going to be a new way of working with all our partners in the community to bring a better health system and care system always round for our, our residents. And I think that's a plus. I concur with everything, um, well, most of everything that Emma Roberts, Councillor Emma Roberts has said. I don't have her concerns because I think if we keep a well-balanced approach to this and with the right people on the boards, I'm sure it will be done for the best possible reasons because that's what people want and they have to demonstrate that. I just wondered, um, I won't speak for long because there's lots of people to speak tonight, I'm sure. But I just wanted to know, has the representation for the areas, has it been decided yet? Because we're very keen to get started. We're very keen to get people on there that are going to contribute, not just turn up. And I'm very keen that people realise the amount of work that's going to be involved in doing this. Because it's going to be a, a tremendous amount of work. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bedsworth. Uh, Councillor Norman, would you like to respond? We haven't had any further indications to speak. OK, happy, happy to respond uh, briefly. Just confirmed to Councillor Roberts. I complimented him before on reading the papers. I'd like to continue doing that. Um, I, I think one of the key things, I, I would agree about, you know, who shouts the loudest being a risk. We've got to do this right. Glad that your scrutiny committee will keep a careful eye on it. Privatisation. There are no other agendas that should creep into this. But I think you're absolutely right about members must engage. And, and as a consequence, you know, you could say, well, let's have a year each. I'm not sure that's a good idea. I think talk, talk to the ward members and, and let's compete for who's really going to engage in this. And if you're in a ward with somebody who's got a bit of expertise in this or feels really committed or feels they have more time available, let's decide who the best person is. And I think it might be better they stick for some years rather than that. The key thing is we can't let it uh, peter out. A, a, a similar answer then to Councillor Beardsworth. I don't think representatives have been decided. I think it's a local ward issue to try and sort out really as, as best you can. Um, that would be my that would be my suggestion mostly we, we had a discussion didn't we about proportionality I think we need to finish that off perhaps we get together as group leaders but for the moment I would honestly urge all people in all wards to talk to each other talk to their other two colleagues and say well who is going to really deliver on this for us that would be the best bet then we'll get together as group leaders perhaps thank you 
Thank you, Councillor Lund. Before you go to the vote, uh, Councillor Brown, you reserved your right to speak. Would you like to? Thank you, much indeed. Okay, in that case, uh, we'll ask for the vote. Uh, Paul, if you can uh, set that up, please. If you'd like to select, please, from your keypads, yes, no, or abstentions, please. Recommendation of 3 1. The recommendation, as my good uh, Vice Chairman has indicated, is on 311. Everybody. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, we have a, a yes vote, which uh, significantly overtakes everything else. Magnificent. Thank you very much indeed. Lovely, thank you. That's carried. Okay, item nine local government boundary review. And um, I'd like to invite Councillor Mike Hallam. You have five minutes, please. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Councillor McCord. You said you were going to have a break at eight o'clock. It's now eight around eight o'clock. That's correct. I think I'll just carry this, this item through, and then we'll do it after that. Thank you, Councillor McCord. So, Councillor Mike Hallam, you have up to five minutes to present this. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, thank you, Chairman. I certainly won't take um, five minutes. Um, this is, if you look at the recommendations, you will see that this is looking at the range of councillors to begin with. Um, the range that we've come up with um, is, um, my screen's gone frozen, apologies. There is, uh, there's a range that we've come up with that goes up to um, 77, se 77 to 82, which is um, down from 93, uh, a reduction of around 15%, depending which number the, if the committee was, um, the, the panel was to go for. Um, the administration will of course be supporting the councillors, uh, the committee's recommendation for this reduction, which will, will of course um, in turn lead to a, a cost saving for the taxpayer. I'm happy to present the report. Thank you very much. And uh, Councillor Suresh Patel, we'd like Mr. to second the proposal. Mr. We have three minutes. Yeah, yeah Mr. Chairman, I'm pleased to second this and reserve my right to speak later on. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Patel. Um, are there any members of the council who wish to comment on this item? I have been notified of three so far. Councillor Keith Holland Delamere. Thank you, Chair. So I just um, I was brought in on the, the um, working group to, to as a representative of our group. I just want to highlight one of the key areas in the actual report on page 124 about the concern about um, central government um, proposals that will be coming our way in terms of devolution. So I think that, that we've are based on the information we've got at the moment. Um, We've built consensus, but there is that key concern about what workload could be coming our way from devolution and central government, especially in light of the ICANN work that we've just talked about. That will be um, extra work for uh, councillors, and to do it well, that will take time. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, would you like to take that question, Councillor Hallam, or not? Um, I didn't think there was a, a, a question, Chairman, um, but I've also obviously read the report and, and, and note those comments in it. It's, this has been a cross-party um, group that have come up with the number, and that's why we're agreeing with that cross-party group's recommendation this evening. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Jonathan Harris. Thank you, Chair. Uh, not a question, just a brief comment, really. I think the working group took a reasonable and collaborative approach um, to arrive at the suggested number of the range of 77 to 82. Uh, I, I think it demonstrates that perhaps we're a little more in touch with real life in the West than the North. I'll leave it there. Um, I'd like to particularly, though, thank the monitoring officer and the rest of the officers who actually had the task of pulling this together, which was no mean feat. There was a lot of dialogue and conversation, um, but actually it was a group of people that took it away and pulled it together. Uh, and obviously we look forward to hearing what the Boundary Views Commission decision is on the 23rd of August. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Emma Roberts. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, again, I commend all the work the officers have done. This could have been no mean feat. I, I'm disappointed that the boundary review of, of the boundary commissions have made, made us do it this way, personally. Um, I think selecting the number of councillors without doing a real detailed review of where those councillors will end up being placed is, is a bit of a finger in the air kind of position. Generally, I would be in favour of reducing the number of councillors. That saves some money, that, that helps our residents, and, and I agree with, with Councillor Harris's comments. Um, however, we've already gone from 134 to 93 when the imposed change to councils was, was put on us. 
I know that all of the councillors in my ward work very hard. I'm quite happy, you know, very happy to say that. All three work very hard. All different parties, all different people. We all work very hard. We've all got busy casework diaries, all of us. I don't, can't speak for anybody else, but I know that we have. I was with Councillor Connolly on Saturday and we were sharing bits of casework. I, I know we have. So if that's the case, and in my area you then take that down to two or one, um, I, I worry for two reasons. One, that my residents who've got a different political persuasion and want to have a, a, a say and a shared collective of who, who, who they have as a representative, but also that somebody won't be able to get around to their casework. So I say this with real caution about reducing the numbers without us having a real understanding of where those councillors are going to be placed. Thank you very much indeed. And Councillor McCord. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, firstly, can I um, place on record my thanks to Suresh for the way in which he managed the, um, the working party. Um, I do rather suspect the consensus might um, wobble a bit now when the rubber hits the road, because the first bit's relatively easy. How many do you want? Once you start drawing lines around and each tribe saying, well, I've got more of my tribe living in this patch than that patch, it might begin to get a bit more fun. Um, and and uh, I'm always there to help. The, the, um, um, <laughs> the, the, the actual number for those that, that weren't on the, on the working party is, well, the 77, I think that was Suresh's lucky number, um, which, we, which we came up with. And um, well, well, let's see how lucky it is with the, uh, with, with, with the, um, the Boundary Commission. Um, you can pick a number, any number. There doesn't appear to be any real sensible guidance that comes from this. And the Boundary Commission apparently are not that interested in saying the ratio of councillors and this council is one to three and a half thousand and in council down the road it's one to five thousand etc etc they don't really want to put anything in that which i, I see malcolm looking at me puzzled it, it's it's weird they they apparently don't really want anything along along those lines which which i'm um uh, yeah e equally perplexed by however if you look at where we're at the 93 and and, and taking on emma's point also we're about one to three, three and a half thousand, that sort of number. When you factor in the growth and then reduce it back down, you're not, you're not going over that. It'll be around one to four thousand. What I think we will need to think about is when you do come to drawing those lines, adding about 700 electors to the current numbers, which is probably where you would end up in that sort of range. That for some members is a few streets, but for other members, it'll be another village. It'll be another parish council. It'll be another first, second, third. It'll be another opportunity to clash because we're all needed to be in three village halls at 7 p.m. on the second Wednesday of the month um, for those that have more, more, multiple parishes. So I think we need to be looking at those bits when we go forward. The bits of coming out from the numbers, well, yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see what, what the Boundary Commission now make of a proposal from ours to come down from 93 to 77 and a proposal from our friends in the north who I think, frankly, are smoking dope if they think they're going to go up from 76 to 99. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you, you were polite. I'm being accurate. Um, the, 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 um, <laughs> the, the, um, the, you know, I, I think that's complete madness. When you bear in mind that when these were set up, Callor suggested, who was a former chairman of the Boundary Commission, somewhere between 45 and 50 should be the number for both councils, which I actually think was woefully under. But that was his... I suppose, semi-professional uh, judgment on things. Thank you, Chairman, and once again, uh, thank you to Suresh. Thank you very much, Councillor McCord. Uh, any further points that anyone would like to raise? No? Okay, Councillor Hallam, can I ask you to respond to the debate, please? <laughs> Sorry, Councillor Brown, beg your pardon, you need to... Have you, did you click your button? Many time? times, you Chairman. <laughs> the system up here is not working as well as it is down there, clearly. Okay. M maybe me not hearing you and walking past you in the street earlier has no, uh, somehow right, uh, disadvantaged me. Councillor Brown, it's yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I welcome the, the findings of the, uh, of, of the working group and uh, actually I think a, a modest reduction of approximately half a councillor per ward on, on the current boundaries is both manageable uh, and the responsible thing to do in, in the light of concerns about uh, how much government is spending in a multitude of areas. I, I, I do not think that more councillors automatically equals more democracy. Mm. It, probably just equals more bureaucracy uh, and we should I believe as conservatives always seek to avoid that overcomplication of, uh, of, of public life and that extra burden on the taxpayer so the points raised about how that translates into sensible ward boundaries 
is the most important question, and uh, you know, particularly for, for speaking as a rural ward member, how that translates into parish councils, trips out on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night to, to, to see the various villages. Uh, but I trust that the Boundary Commission will take that into account and come back with the appropriate representation in each ward. But certainly I think by, by making this modest reduction, we're setting the right tone, sending the right message to the people that we represent. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Some very valid points raised there. Uh, Councillor Hallam. Thank you, Chairman. Can I respond? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, just, just to sum up and, and, and reiterate, I think earlier on we talked about, um, in the opposition priority business, there was talk about leadership and the importance of political leadership. That's what we're doing here. We're leading from the front, I think, and saying we, we can um, uh, deal, as uh, Councillor Brown says, with a, a modest, uh, modest decrease. And again, I say that number is going to come out about a 15% reduction. So I think we can live with that, and it sends a message out clearly to our, our residents that we're leading from the front on this. I think that's very important, and I'm happy to propose a report. Thank you, Councillor Hallam. We do have Councillor Patel, who reserved his right to speak. And I do apologise, you are behind the screen here. Don't take it personally. May I just ask everyone, if you are indicating you'd like to speak using the panels that we have, that you keep the button on. Because if you push it, depress the button, and then push it again, it actually cancels the list up here. So I do apologise. Um, but Councillor Patel, you have that, that moment. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. All I want to say is, I mean, this is a cross-party working group. Uh, we met, I think, four times. And... Uh, is really a good report, but I would like to acknowledge uh, the monitoring officer for her input in this report. Also thank election officer Jane and Mark West and our Democratic Services staff members, Tracy, Marina Watkins and Paul, and uh, all the uh, working group committee members. But the real work will begin in September when we know by end of August the numbers of the councillor and uh, everybody will welcome to put their input on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Patel. And thank you, Councillor Hallam. Uh, I'd ask you then now to uh, place your vote. And that's on item three. The recommendations as listed, 3.1, A, B, C, and D. If you'd like to make your selection now, please. Six seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one second. Has anyone not voted who would like to vote? Please raise your hand. Thank you. Okay, it's a yes then, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. So that motion has been carried and recommendations thereon. Okay, in the interest of everyone's health, I'd like to propose that we take a uh, 10 minute now short health break. And if you can reconvene, please, at uh, 10 minutes time, 2023. Thank you.
Councillor Irvin Swift, if you'd like to introduce the report, and you have five minutes, please. Thank you. Councillor Irvin Swift. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. So, Councillor, you have all read your report with great interest, I hope, and uh, I will not repeat what is in it. But I would like to highlight three points, and I will tell you what they are now, so like that, you keep that in mind. First is what we did the first year, what was the objective of the audit committee. Second, the risk register. And thirdly, we have now our team of internal audit back in-house. So the first year of the audit committee was a very odd year and the first for I think in local government, we close all the set of the previous authority of account, and uh, we have closed all the set bar two, but those two are already by delegated power, and that is with the uh, auditor, and they should uh, be able to be signed before September. Um, now, uh, it was a mammoth task, and I would like to thank the officer and also all the members of the committee, because we had to plow through a lot of uh, document, and one, I think, was the biggest document in the history of uh, local government, more than a thousand pages of accounts. So uh, thank you uh, for all your hard work. Secondly, um, with that, um, with this hard work, we are starting to work with our new external auditor for the uh, account 21-22. Uh, um, the external auditor will start uh, in really uh, strongly in September, uh, but we have already met, our committee have already met the external auditor in January, and uh, the team at WNC uh, are starting the good relationship, and we may uh, that continue. We want to have a positive uh, relationship with our uh, uh, external auditor. Now I will come to the risk register. Uh, in life, like in audit, uh, you know how passionate I am about audit, and we should all take great care of looking after the audit. People think it's a bit the backwater, but risk register is very important because audit will look at the past, and the risk register look at your future. At the moment, all we are delivering the present. So we deliver the present, and when we look at the risk register, we look at the future and how we can mitigate, mitigate everything that happened now. So the uh, audit committee have changed a bit, and every time we have what we call a deep dive, and we look at one of the risks. For example, last week we look at the risk 04, which is um, uh, to sit with a counselor. Uh, uh, co oh, sorry, <laughs> now I have um, uh, it sit uh, with uh, counselor Michael Adam, and uh, I am very uh, pleased with the robust discussion that our old committee had. And um, one question was asked about planning, and that was scrutinized, and we have been assured that uh, good progress were made. Um, so the risk register, if you have any idea how we should improve it, please do send us email. We think it's very, very important. Um, now, the risk register, with the risk register, it sits with the internal auditor, and that is the most exciting thing that will happen next year. Next year, we will have been, we will have 19 officers will look after audit. And uh, that is thanks to uh, our section 151 officer who makes sure that the audit is in a good place because without good audit, we can get into bad habit. Good audit would make sure we are all well behaved and we look after the future. So allow me to go just into the detail. So. On the 1st of August, we will have a new chief internal auditor. 
uh, she uh, will join us the 1st of August, and after a very rigorous selection, uh, I think we have a splendid candidate, and she will challenge everybody uh, in a nice way. We will have nine general auditors who go through everything. We will have three um, auditors who will do just risk management and internal contra control. And finally, we will have six auditors who will do our counter fraud. Fraud is one of the very important things we need to have really a zero tolerance for fraud. But what is important in audit, audit is not there to be negative. Audit is the council friend. And as chairman of audit, I would like to tell you how we should all look after audit. It is so important. And I want everybody to see that audit is the friend of the council and not the enemy. And I finally, I would like to thank all the officers and all the committee for the work they have done. And if I may, I would like two special thanks for the uh, officers, the section 151 officer, Martin Henry, who has worked tirelessly. He, ac he accepts all my questions with my sense of humor. Um, and uh, he replied, and it, it is wonderful to work with him. And, and I would like to thank Audra Stratum, who has helped him to close all those accounts. And thank you. I'm sure they will do no. uh, thank all the other officers. Thank, thank you, you thank so you, much. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Cecile. Uh, I'd like to now uh, call upon Councillor Mark Hughes uh, to second the proposal. Thank you. You have up to three minutes. Please feel free not to have to use them all. <laughs> yes, thank you, Chair. But, yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet. I mean, following on from Cecile, I mean, that speaks volumes in itself. And I can only commend all the officers, members, and everyone involved in um, delivering this report. So thank you very much. I'm delighted to second. Lovely. Thank you very much, Leeds. OK, any item, any uh, members of the Council who wish to speak on this item, please do indicate. Thank you, Councillor Stone. Councillors, right, if all councillors can ensure their microphones are off, thank you. It's, it's on now, thank you, Chair. Um, it is a huge amount of work, actually, audit. Yep. Huge amount of documents that have to be read and lots of numbers that we have to uh, look at and understand. But most of all, it tells us a story, and it tells us a story about the health of the organisation, which is why, of course, it's so important. And we're we're taking over, aren't we, from a legacy where we had um, predecessor councils with 114 notices, where we had a public interest report, where we've had um, audit reports that um, couldn't pass us on value for money. So we have got a lot to prove as a new organisation. So. I'm really, really pleased that we've brought internal audit in-house. It never did sit well with me that that wasn't true before. So I'm really, really pleased about that. I think, um, as Councillor Irving Swift has said, the risk register is really important. And, you know, that's available for everybody to have a look at. Um, and other people's comments would be very welcome. I think we need to try and move to a position where other members who are not on audit and members of the public feel free to come to our meetings and to raise questions if, if they're so minded. I'm going to have to say this, and it isn't personal, Cecile, please, you know, because you know my view. Um, I really, really do think in terms of good governance, we need an independent chair of audit. It's got nothing to do with the quality of the chair that we have at the minute. I just think it's about good governance. And I have to say that one of the things I am missing, might be a judgment on me, who knows, is, is that independence who, who will say to the committee, these are the things that are worrying. These are the things that you need to really look at. These are the things that you need to raise questions about. And I think that can only be done uh, by an independent chair, and I am missing that bit.
But apart from that, you know, my group's going to vote for the report. Thank you very much for that. And, um, yeah, thank you. The, the thing, one of the big risks, you know, with audit is the same risk we've got across lots of services. And it's because uh, lack, of, lack of resource in the finance team. There is a lack of resource in the finance team. And I think that is a risk. Thank you, Councillor Stone. Councillor Humphreys, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Councillor Irving Swift for her work as Chair of the Audits, uh, Audit and Governance Committee and also thank the officers that serve the committee. I fully agree with her that the 2022-23 uh, year will be a, a testing one and I'd also echo uh, Councillor Stone's view that we have an awful lot to prove given our uh, legacy um, and I, I do think I do agree with, agree with her and nothing personal to Councillor Irving Swift that there is a strong argument for an independent chair um, my optimism for the second year is qualified rather than the chair's measured optimism uh, but I look forward to there being more time to challenge and scrutinize the whole activities of the council as so much time has needed to be spent in the first year overseeing the closing of the accounts of the four legacy boroughs. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Humphreys. Uh, Councillor Rumens, please. Thank you, Chair. Just a quick point. I think people are drawing on the fact that we don't have a politically independent chair of audit, but I think we're missing a big point. I mean, we, we came in and I think we had something like 10 audits outstanding. We're now down to two off the top of my head, or 10 reports outstanding and we're down to two. Um, it is down to the individual. It is so down to the individual on a, on a committee like this. And you can have a brilliant independent chair. You can have a really poor independent chair. Likewise, you can have a brilliant political chair or a really poor political chair. In this case, I think we've got a really good political chair that's got about as independent a mind as I've ever known of anybody that I've come across in this world, um, Cecile. So I think we're in good hands there. And I think, yeah, it's just let's... Let's not try and draw too much of a cloud over that because actually I think the committee's in a much better position than we were as when we left NCC, for example. So let's just be, be careful of making assumptions on those sorts of things. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rimmins. Uh, any other members wish to address any points that they'd like on this? No, thank you in terms. Councillor Cecile, would you like to, uh, Evan Swift, to wrap this up then, please? Thank you. Just I would like to thank you all the nice comment of the members on the, cap, on the, the committee. And uh, we should not uh, mix politics and independence. I promise you, I am completely independent. And I think the leader can confirm that. We have many, a lot of discussions, so I will always be independent, like all the members on the committee. As soon as you go on the audit committee, I ask every, every member to hang their coat, their political colour, at the door, and we have a proper debate. Thank you, Chairman. Lovely. Thank you very much. Need a last for a vote, then, please, uh, on the Audit and Governance Committee annual report, which we've all had copies of. Uh, please make your vote now. Yes, no, or abstain. Lovely. If any, any members have not been able to vote, please raise your hand if you wish to vote. Councillor Clark, are you standing to address? No. Thank you, much, Steve. Super. Okay, the answer is yes, so motion is carried. Um, thank you for the report, and thank Councillor Cecile, Evan Swift. If you can pass the, the thanks back to the teams who helped prepare it as well. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to move on to item 11, and I'd like to invite uh, Councillor Serge Patel to introduce a report on the Democracy and Standards Committee. Thank you. you Thank you, Mr. Minutes. Chairman. I'm pleased to propose the first annual report of this Democracy and Standards Committee. It has been a very busy year, as you can see in the report. The purpose of this report is to note the work undertaken by committee over the first year. This committee maintains and promotes high standard of code of conduct as all the members have signed up to. If I can just remind all elected members, it is requirement to regularly or as and when changes happen to update your register of interest, please email Ed Bostock uh, if there are any changes. This is really important. 
uh, to maintain. Uh, Democracy and Standard Committee have approved this report on 17th of June and uh, it's come to the full council for a recommendation 3.2.1, 3.2.2 and 3.2.3. If I can take and acknowledge all the committee members for their input over the years, also thanks my appreciation to monitoring officer and democratic services staff members, Paul Hanson, Tracy Teeves and Marina Watkins. And please do move the report. Thank Councillor Patel. Councillor Evan Swift, you have up to three minutes, please, to second the proposal. I will not use my three minutes. I am happy to second the report. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, any members of the Council who wish to comment on this item, please indicate. Uh, we have Councillor Stone to go first. Thank you. No? Okay. Councillor Bowen. Is it Bowen? Would you like to speak on this report? No? Okay. Um, any members who would like to speak, please indicate. No? In that case. Um, Councillor Patel, there's nothing really to sum up, but uh, would you like to respond effectively to any thoughts? No, thank you, mind? Mr. Chairman. Thank As you. I said, this is the, uh, we maintain high standard of uh, code of conduct here, and this is the democracy committee. We don't whip anybody. Uh, please, uh, you know, please to uh, move the report. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, if I can ask for a vote now, please use your buttons on your tablets in front of you. Yes, no, or abstain. Any members who are having difficulty in voting, please raise your hand. No, in that case, that's carried. Thank you very much indeed. Motion carried and report accepted. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Patel. Item 12 updates the Constitution, and I'd like to invite Councillor Suresh Patel again to introduce the report and move the proposal. We have five minutes. Uh, Councillor Humphreys, can I just turn your microphone off, please? Thank you. Councillor Patel. Uh, yeah, is there an amendment here? Do you want to? Or you want me to propose this first? If you'd like to, that's fine, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm pleased to uh, propose the uh, report for the update on the Constitution. Uh, it's really self explanatory here. Uh, there's the two recommendations, 3.1a which updates the Constitution as sets out in Section 5. And there is a B approved for revised arrangement of priority opposition motion also sets out in the section below. Uh, so I'm pleased to propose this. Thank you very much. And uh, Councillor Adam Brown, would you like to second the proposal? Uh, yes, Mr Chairman, I uh, second the proposal, but reserve my right to speak, please. Super, thank you. Okay, we have been notified previously that an amendment has been received, copies of which have been circulated to all members. And I'd like to ask uh, Councillor Wendy Randall to move the amendment, please. You have up to five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, our amendment is on 3.1a. Note and approve the updates to the Constitution set out in Section 5, with the exception of the re revised arrangements at 5.2.9, and reject the recommendation of the Democracy and Standards Committee in relation to 5.2.9 and instead ask the committee to reconsider the recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Randall. Councillor Purser, would you like to second that uh, detail? You Chair, comment? yes, I'll formally second that and reserve my right to speak if necessary. Thank you very much indeed. Are there any members of the Council who wish to comment on the amendment at all? I have a couple of members. Uh, Councillor Jonathan Harris. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, the revised recommendation that was originally put forward, we believe, uh, is fair and democratic uh, and representative. Other groups must realise that Labour don't represent everybody and they're not the only opposition group that exists that may have different views. Opposition comes from multiple sources. Perhaps it would be unfair of me to mention Tiverton and Honiton, but I will anyway. In the West North Hants area, the Liberal Democrats have rep rep rural representation in the leg Legacy South North Hants area, and a four of the two councillors in the Legacy Daventry area. Labour, with the exception of Councillor Randall, is entirely based around the Legacy Northampton Borough areas. I have respect for colleagues in the Labour group. However, I must point out that in Daventry and South North Hants, the Liberal Democrat vote was in fact higher than Labour in both of these areas. It's important for democracy that
that alternative perspectives and rural voices are heard. And it's extremely disappointing that the Labour group clearly feel uncomfortable about those with other or different perspectives. We're asking for what is in effect a 10 minute reference point to present ideas for consideration to the administration once a year. That's 10 minutes once a year. We've had a debate this evening on the standards and the Nolan principles. I believe that this is object, uh, not objective, the argument against, and one might argue lacks integrity, and one might even say anti-democratic. Returning this to the Democracy and Standards Committee will certainly not change our position in any shape or form. I therefore uh, strongly object to the rejection of this amendment um, and will not be voting for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Beardsworth. Thank you, Chair. Um, to say I'm disappointed is putting it mildly. I've always believed in, in, in party politics, but we've always shared things. Um, even the first thing you ever teach a child is to share, and it's something that you want to see. But unfortunately, the Labour group want to have all the opposition priority business throughout the year and won't let us have even one. Now, after t tonight's performance, maybe they're a little bit worried about competition. Um, and I would say that anybody should be given a voice. Um, the last leader, um, Gareth, um, gosh, Ailes, said he was prepared to give us one anyway. And, uh, you know, I just thought it was just a nice idea that he would share with us. But now the the group is reneged on this, and I don't understand why. Um, we've always tried to get on with the Labour group, and I just don't understand why they're being so undemocratic at this time. Thank you. We'll not be supporting this. We cannot, because we believe in democracy, not selfishness. Thank you, Councillor Bisworth. Um, Councillor Emma Roberts. Thank you, Chair. Oh, I'm gutted, Jonathan. I really am, because I'm surprised at you, and I thought much better of that, if I'm honest. Um, the whole item is going back, or is we're suggesting goes back. That doesn't mean that there can't be a discussion around you participating. And if you recall, at the very first meeting for opposition business to be debated, I also even offered to the monitoring officer to allow you to speak even when you weren't allowed to do so. So to suggest that we're running scared or frightened of democracy or have any concern over any of that, um, I think is a, is, a, is a mistake. And I think it's unfair of you. Um, we do work together. We want to all work together. Councillor Roberts, I'm, sorry, can I ask you to address me rather than individual members? Oh, sorry. Of course, of course I Thank can, you. Chair. No problem at all. I just don't like just staring. I like to talk to the person I'm speaking about. So thank you. But I just think it's an unfair approach to take. Um, the, the recommendation and the amendment suggest that the, recommend, the report goes back and it's reconsidered. And hopefully there, an open debate can be had about that particular topic. Um, and, you know, while we're talking about by-elections, it was, it was one all, wasn't it? So, you know, it, it, it's irrelevant. It, it really is irrelevant. There is no running scared. There is no issue in respect of democracy here. And I'd really encourage us to work together and continue to do so. Thank you. Councillor McCord. Thank you, Chair. Well, I'll support the, um, the reference back, but probably not for the reasons that the Labour Party might like. Um, it, I, I struggle with what this whole opposition motion, priority motion, is actually about. Our current format, Labour say we think, the administration say we don't agree. There's no debate. There's no opportunity for other points, and I don't think it works, and that was, in my view, proved earlier. So now we're saying, well, Labour say we think, the administration says we don't agree, and there'll still be no vote, and there'll be no so what coming out of it, except that the Liberal Democrats have a go to say what they think, and the administration can say we don't agree, and, um, and, so, and so we'll go on um, each time. The, there is no debate, and earlier, had we had a debate, on the standards in public life, you could have firstly pointed out that the MPs are not subject to the Local Government Code of Conduct from, from West North Hands. Had there been a debate, 
You could have pointed out that the very points that were being asked for are already there, because I remember Jonathan Harris putting forward an, uh, uh, an amendment which in, incorporated the Nolan principles into the WNC uh, Code of Conduct, and I think that was accepted and, and taken through. So had we had a debate, these points could have come out, but we didn't have a debate. You just have this sham thing of one side saying we think, one side saying get lost, and we move on to the next side of our business. We just waste time. If you want to have a debate, great, have a debate. So I will support the reference back, and I would then say to the, uh, to, to the committee, think about the fact if you want to have a debate, and again, if the Liberal Democrats want to have it, great, crack on, knock yourselves out. But then remove one from the other four or five um, items in, in the day. Instead of having to pick one and negotiate that with Labour and work out, and then I'll suddenly find that, well, we picked August, and actually the most important political development of the year is in August, and we want to make a point about that. Pick any day, time you want, but take one out so we can all still get home at the same time. Uh, it, it just doesn't seem to work to me, and I don't know what it does. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to ask that the independents get in. I'm not interested in spraying political graffiti. I'm not interested in grandstanding and showboating. I'm only interested in actually doing the, 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 the um, well, what I'm doing now, Sally, I'm actually trying to point out that this doesn't work. It doesn't work as a forum. We were one hour and 50 minutes into this meeting before we got to the first substantive item of, item of business, setting aside the, the, the resident who raised the most important thing about, about the fatal accident. That one item, uh, again, one hour, 50 minutes before we get to the substantive item of business, that really is where we need to be looking at in reviewing our constitution. That's really where we should be, we should be going as a, as a council. So I'm happy to, to look at the, the reference back, probably not for the reasons they want, but for those reasons, I'll support the amendment. Thank you, Councillor McCord, right on time. And uh, any further speakers? Or any? No, okay, Councillor Brown, would you like to respond to the debate? You have up to three minutes. Chairman, Sorry, no, Councillor oh, Patel, I beg your pardon. I had Councillor Brown originally, it's Councillor Patel now, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all the speakers and the comments have been noted. But can I just elude all members again what uh, Councillor Nunn said when uh, item six was discussed. Please, please read the papers before you come to the committee. As I said, we don't weep in the Conservative group, the Standards and Democracy Committee. But, you know, if you come with that, I mean, we would not have been wasting time here now. Uh, but, Mr. Chairman, look, uh, I am pleased to uh, propose that uh, we accept the recommendation 3.1a here, and I will def well, we'll defer the uh, B, 3.1b, back to the committee and bring it back uh, on 30th September Council meeting. Lovely. Thank you very much, Councillor Patel. Um, can I just confirm that everyone has seen sight of the amendment? Thank you very much indeed. Okay. In that case, I'll ask for a vote, please. On the amendment, please. So please indicate your acceptance of the amendment, yes, no, or abstention. Order, Chairman. Are we voting on the amendment? Because I thought it was accepted, therefore it didn't need to be voted on. Well, we were, we were voting on the amendment itself, definitely. So please, if you can in indicate whether you actually are voting for the amendment or not. I have. Have you voted on the amendment, Councillor McCord? This is what we're voting for. As I, as I raised. That's right. Uh, are you happy with that, Councillor McCord? Never been happier. Well, I will Perhaps. be happier whenever you get home, home to hell out of here, okay. but yeah. Thank you. In that case, the, the result on the, on the amendment is that it's carried. See, yes. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Councillor Patel. It's the end of the amendment. Substantive motion. On the substantive motion, are there any members who would like, wish to comment on that item at all that we have before us? Possibly not, after all the uh, auction that has been used. In that case, Councillor Adam Brown, I'm come back to you, sir. Let's respond to the entire debate. Thank you. I'll save us all the time. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, sir. Okay, I'll ask for a vote now on the, uh, on the actual item now as amended if you can please indicate whether you're on support or not, yes, no, or abstention. If anyone's having difficulty, please do raise your hand and let me know. Thank you. Okay, in that case, the vote is carried to yes, so the item as amended has gone through.
Thank you very much indeed. Okay, item 13, Western Fable Health and Wellbeing Hub. I'd like to invite Councillor Dan Lister to introduce the report and move the proposal. We have five minutes. Councillor Lister. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this report is seeking approval for £25.1 million towards the cost of the new Western Fable Health and Wellbeing Hub in Talavera Ward. This is one of our most deprived areas, but it will also serve a catchment within 15 minutes of either walking or driving of 90,000. Northampton's health indicators perform poorly in comparison with national averages on factors such as deprivation, obese children, physically active adults, life expectancy and under 75 mortalities. Northampton has also been ranked as 105th worst deprived local authority in the UK, putting it within the top third of the country. Talavera War, which is considered in the top 20% most deprived neighbourhoods in the country and surrounding wards such as Riverside, are considered in the top 10% of deprived neighbourhoods in the whole country. This scheme is to replace existing health and leisure facilities comprising Lings Forum Leisure Centre, Western Favour Health and Wellbeing, Olympus House for Adult Services, the Forum for Children's Services, and Western Favour Library, which are outdated and no longer fit for purpose. It will be delivering leisure, learning, adult, children's and healthcare services into one building to deliver integrated services for the community and create economic growth through new homes and jobs and generate efficiencies through capital receipts and reduce running costs. There are significant costs that the council face through the running costs of the services at the current facilities at Western Fable if, Fable if the new hub is not developed. The new health and wellbeing hub will also mean reduced running costs for the council as well as an increased income from health and police partners. An estimate of the cost of status quo to continue to run the service from the library, Olympus House, the Forum and the Leisure Centre for a further 25 year period is 11 point 11.4 million. In moving to the new model, some of these costs will clearly be avoided. We are seeking the additional funding as to be successful in a levelling up bid, a full funding package must be identified. The total amount is 45.1 million pounds and have each been reviewed and agreed by finance and includes known risks such as the current level inflation and costs of increases of raw materials, as well as contingency. In the event it does not look like it will exceed the budget, this will be addressed through cost value engineering to ensure it stays within the budget. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Lister. Councillor Rupert Frost, you have three minutes. I need the um, three minutes. Thank you. The um, chatting. Sorry, Kels. I said, I'm, I said I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to second it without, uh, without speaking. Thank you. Lovely. Very good of you indeed. Okay. Thank you. Any members of the council who wish to comment on this item, please use the button on your panel and retain it on. Thank you. But we'll have Councillor Bob Purser first of all. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, we did uh, call this, this Cabinet decision in, and it was considered by the Place Scrutiny meeting earlier this week. Um, the ground was the lack of member involvement in the, um, in the consultation in developing the bid. Can I thank the officers who came along and patiently explained the process to us I'm very grateful to them for that. The decision of scrutiny was not to ask the Cabinet to reconsider it, but we did, will ask that Cabinet ensures that ward members and the voluntary <coughs> sector are consulted early in future funding bids. Um, we also talked about the need for capacity building, so we have a pipeline for projects especially those from less disadvantaged communities who have more difficulty putting together good bids. So we were hoping the local authority can develop that capacity to support uh, uh, development of projects. Some of us were also concerned uh, about the short lead times for projects as significant as this, and we hope that the Cabinet might make representations to their me members of Parliament about this issue. 
So, uh, Chair, we decided not, that the, the, the scrutiny committee decided not to call it in, really because we didn't want to risk this application not going forward. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Purser. Uh, Councillor Duffy, please. Thank you. Sorry, we're going to go to the original councillors who had logged that they'd like to speak ahead of this meeting, and Councillor Janice Duffy was the next. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, the leader of uh, the ruling uh, council has said that he's very proud of Northampton, but I know one place he won't be proud of because for 10 to 15 years, the Western Favour Hub has been dilapidated, uh, lacking in proper um, uh, decoration. Uh, we've had um, leaking roofs, we've had tiles coming off the swimming pool. So I'm very pleased that this um, LUF funding is going to be awarded. And I hope also that the, the, this council will pass on the rest of the funding. Um, Western Faithful Hub gives vital surf services to an area, area of high deprivation and complex community needs, as uh, Councillor Lister was saying. Um, the key services it provides are vital for the Eastern District growth, but footfall must be increased to achieve the savings speculated upon. Uh, so, considering this, uh, the footfalls have to increase, where are the cheap buses? Where are the extra transport links to Western Fable? Uh, the many different cultures and ways of life increase stress and conflict, made worse under the growing economic difficulties, and consequently explains the rise in violent crime. Uh, the Eastern District, hidden costs of antisocial behaviour, causing um, obesity, alcoholism, etc., etc., and also loss of young talent to county lines of drugs, are counted already in large by Western Fable Hub, um, which proves a very strong case for the new hub to be regenerated. That, um, like I say, the hub needs a higher footfall for the leisure facilities, which need to be reasonably priced and easily accessible. Uh, prices at WNC assets tend to be highly priced. The light show at Delapre was £17, which is out of reach of most families. And country parks, our heritage and land, have a charge too. And with Western Fable leisure prices for a swim at £4.50 and a day return bus ticket at £4.20, for a family of four, here too it can be too expensive because it makes nearly £40. With the tensions in the Eastern District existing, violent crime is rising in this area, with almost half of recorded crime in Western Fable being violence and also of a sexual nature. That's 34 in April alone, 2022. That's streetcheck.co.uk for the source. It is therefore hard to understand the absence of a 24-7 man police station at WF, which serves a densely populated, deprived area with all that that entails. Already thank, high thank crime you, Councillor Duffy. If I can ask to wind up, please. Thank you. Okay. Of national concern, and it is no reassurance for Eastern District, especially women, to know police is so far away. Even the CCTVs in Western Fable and the Eastern District aren't good enough to catch fly tippers, so there'd be no comfort uh, for uh, victims of crime. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Councillor Hill, James Hill. Thank you, Chair. Um, you'll have to excuse my voice. I had some dental surgery earlier today, so my, I've got a bit of an anaesthetic. So <clears throat> apologies if you can't fully understand me. Um, just to say, I'm really happy to see this um, come, coming about today. 
Obviously, uh, my ward will really benefit from this. It's something that we desperately need, and I'm delighted to see it on the table. Um, I know that there have been some issues and some criticisms raised about some of the levelling up fund and the way that it's been um, diverted and sent, but I think this is a great example of how it should be used. So I am surprised to see there's been some critical, um, you know, some critical articles about it, but hopefully I think as this project moves forward, um, we'll be able to see the benefits. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Nate. Councillor Keith holland Delamere. Yeah, um, this, as my colleague has said, this, this, this proposal has been around for at least 10 to 15 years. So I really, really welcome the fact that this is one of the top priorities for this council. Um, I, I know from experience and email correspondence from the health services that have been looking for maternity services in the area, looking for locations, and they haven't had one. So I'm really pleased to see that this is included in the report. Um, I think the key, the key for me is the fact that if we do not get the funding, we still need the commitment to build the facilities in this area because uh, Leisure Centre is 50 years old. It is not fit for purpose anymore. And there's many different structures in the area that are at the end of their lifespan and will take substantial amounts to refurbish. Um, one one key, key area that I really want to say is that, that um, we really do, as my, my colleague um, Bob um, Purser, uh, pointed out we need to talk to the voluntary community sector especially at this stage because it's important to have all the partners in the room seeing how we can shape this service to best serve some of the most deprived communities in West Northamptonshire and it will act not just as a hub for West Northamptonshire there will be people coming in from North Northamptonshire in terms of Ells Barton and some of those neighbouring areas um, so, and also, as part of the development, we also need to look at the uh, transport infrastructure because there's no end of problems um, in that area in terms of buses that obscure, obscure the highway. So I really welcome this report, but regardless of the funding, whether the funding comes back, I just really want to see this authority commit to this project as a priority. Thank you. Councillor Sally Bidsworth. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, at the call-in the other night, um, Councillor Lister um, explained a lot of what was going to go on, and I think most of us were relieved to hear that hopefully the Western Favour Hub will go ahead if we get the funding, and that's the big if, isn't it? Um, because it desperately needs it. The forum itself is in a terrible state, and so is the rest of the area, and we really need to bring it into the 21st century and make it a better facility for all the people who use that facility now. Um, my only concern is, is raised expectations. We keep promising things, and if the government doesn't deliver on the money, you know, we're going to let people down again. And those people have enough to put up with in their life without missing out on something like this. So we we'll all have to keep our fingers crossed and hope the government sees it as a a really good project and supports this wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Harris, Jonathan Harris. Thank you, Chair. Uh, actually, nothing to add from me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Joe Guilford. Chair. Thank you, Chair. Sorry about that. Um, thank you for the opportunity to ask a question. Mine is around the financial risk. I too was at the meeting where we scrutinised the report and it was more about the process, um, but the, this wasn't a question for this scrutiny forum and I'd like to bring it to this evening. We were advised not so long ago in this uh, chamber where a project had come in overspent that the methodology used to calculate costings in our reports, there was lessons to be learned and a more robust methodology was going to be used. Um, reading this report at 7.1.1, I'm a little bit alarmed with the terminology, the costs are indicative and greater detail will emerge as the detailed design and costing stage. Really, all I want to know is 
how robust is the costings? Has a new methodology been used to work up these costings? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Brown, Adam Brown. Thank you, Chairman. I uh, just wish to comment in my role as the Cabinet Member for, for Leisure and really to address some of the concerns that have been raised both tonight and, and previously around accessibility and affordability. Uh, because given the location of the, the Western Fable Herb on the, you know, on the corner of some of the, the most deprived areas of, of Northampton, it is vital that we ensure that affordability and accessibility for the communities on its doorstep. And in fact, I've had several conversations with the officers who I work with to ensure that that, that question of affordability is baked into our procurement process when we look at the new contracts for our leisure facilities that come up for renewal in 2026. You know, it cannot be the case that the people closest to those leisure facilities are those least able to, to access them. You know, we need to address that injustice. We need to make sure that people look at the shiny new building uh, just outside their house and know that it's something that is a place where they are welcome, that they can go uh, to, to use for, the, for, their, for their families and their friends. Uh, I would just like to pick up on one comment made about the, the Delapri light show. Um, yes, it was expensive. I looked at going. I decided not to go because of the cost. But of course, Delapri, most of the time, uh, is free uh, to park. It's, it's free to, to walk around the grounds. Uh, there's a, a, a lovely secondhand bookshop where you can pick up books for as little as 50 pence. Uh, it's, it's a marvelous place to go. And again, on, one of the more, uh, on the edge of one of the more deprived areas of Northampton. It's a fantastically access accessible venue, and I would commend that. And yes, maybe we need to, to look at the costings of some of those one-off events, but generally speaking, we are looking at somewhere that's fantastically accessible and open to the public, and it is one of the, the key priorities for the Chief Executive there at Delapri Abbey. But I just reiterate that, I, as the Cabinet Member for Leisure, I'm hugely excited about this project. I know that there was disappointment uh, from some, par uh, from some par uh, parties that their, their wishes hadn't been picked up on and put forward for, uh, for government funding. But I think if we're being objective here, we would struggle to think of a more worthy uh, project to be this council's number one priority for this sort of funding. It will deliver on multiple fronts, not just in my portfolio, but in Councillor Goldby's and Councillor Smith's and probably across several others besides. Uh, if we can get this over the line, it will be a fantastically regenerative project for a key part of uh, the county town and we should all welcome that. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Points well made. I was at the very first meeting of this discussion about 10 years ago, so it would be a relief to see this up and running, and many, many people would certainly appreciate from the facilities available. Uh, Councillor McCord, you're the last speaker on this item. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. The, um, the recommendation at point 31B is saying that we are approving the principle of the capital funding of 25.1 million for the next financial year, 23-24. So are we beginning to say how we're going to pay for that then? Or are we beginning to make a fixed pin in the budget setting at this early stage when nothing has actually been kicked off in terms of how we're going to have our budget setting for next year? So are we going to rearrange the capital programme and then downgrade something else to take this 25 million out of it? Are we going to extend the borrowing for the 25 million? Or are we just going to um, raid the back of the sofa and try and find 25 million of loose change sitting around. I'd be particularly interested to know how we're going to do that, because I'm not entirely comfortable with the principle of beginning to write in pencil parts of the budget, and then you're going to have to set a budget around decisions that have already been taken earlier. Thank you, Councillor McCord. Uh, Councillor Strachan, you have the, uh, the last request to speak. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I didn't want to speak, but uh, I, I felt I must express my absolute delight with the proposed development, which I'm sure will be very welcome in Northampton East, Eastern District. Western Fayetteville Center has served the people extremely well. Indeed, my family have been using the services there for the past 36 years. So, um, so I welcome the proposed improvement facilities in this document and hope the project will get the necessary funding. Chairman, while I have not read the document fully and not intend to, 
I don't understand why the council is, has or is spending limited funds investigating the, possible, the possibility of site B, which is the police station. We are told the council already owns site A. Also, it is a larger site than site B. Site A is already a cleared site, whereas site B, buildings will have to be demolished and cleared and additional, at additional cost to the council. The link to site A and the Western Fable Shopping Center is already in place and well established, meaning it is easy for our older population and wheelchair users to use the shopping center as well as the healthcare facilities. Um, uh, yes, the estimated cost, sorry Chairman, the estimated cost of the project is 45.1 million. The council is hoping to get 20 million of government funding. The 25.1 million shortfall at current estimated cost will fall on the shoulders of the council. Money that is not easily available at this juncture. Chairman, why were we or are we considering site B? What is the reason behind this? Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Strachan. I'd like to call on Councillor Dan Lister now to respond to the debate. And if you could pick up that final point first, please. I'll get back to him with an answer. In full, if that's OK, when I've got the proper answer for that one, and I'll let you know. Um, uh, on, I'll just fly through the other points. Member of representations, yes, completely agree with you. And as we outlined in scrutiny, we're committed to that. And I think I mentioned it in the report first. Also, the feedback on the hatch um, will... Um, yeah, from that we've gone for the hatch fund, part of the other funding, we'll, we, we can use those as well. Um, in terms of pipeline of projects, it does mention in the report there was uh, half a million pounds already allocated to that for this year to be able to build that team and develop a pipeline of projects. So those are moving forwards as well. Um, cost of attending swimming lessons, yes, completely acknowledge that, that there's some issues there. We were speaking to the providers um, yesterday, in fact, and they're committed to offering free swimming to the most deprived people and as well as their charitable thing, look at extending that further out as well. They do do some offers around, I think it's £25 a month and everything's included, including swimming lessons as well, if you're interested, which you know, privately costs about 10 or £12 if the kids want to learn. Um, robust costing, um, we already added £4 million to the, to the total amount, um, so any run, overrun we value engineered. What we set out in the report is the worst case scenario, um, so that it, it assumes borrowing at, at that level. But if you know, when it comes to it, we, we can look at other other options as to whether we've got capital we can use or whether whether we have to borrow. But the the report is the worst case um, funding. Um, in terms of the levelling up funds, the query that you raised there, we, we, we have gone through and I should thank the officers really. They've done a lot of work in understanding what the government's really pushing and all of the other bids are for levelling up uh, for health and wellbeing hubs. So we should be relatively confident-ish as well as we can be that, that this, will be, um, this one will be able to go through. And yeah, just echo again, just thanking the officers for the hard work they've done in submitting the bids and, and finance and, and the Regen team have been perfect. Thank you. Thank Councillor Lister. If you would mind uh, also copying me into the reply on uh, the question that was raised by Councillor Strachan as well. Thank you. And I'm sure the rest of the councillors will also be keen to be updated. Okay, I'd like to ask for a, a vote, please, now um, for the um, item 13, Western Fable Health and Wellbeing Hub. If you could select, please, yes, no, or abstention now. And please raise your hand if you have difficulties in voting. Thank you. Okay, that's now carried. Thank you, Roger Lee. And thank you. Motion carried on that. Item 14, Chief Officer Appointment. I'd like to invite Councillor Mike Hallam to introduce the report and move the proposal. You have up to five minutes, Councillor Hallam. Thank you, Chairman. I'll save you some time. I already need five minutes. Sorry, your microphone's not on, Councillor Hallam. 
Thank you, Chairman. I certainly won't take the five minutes. We had a very similar report at the last Council meeting. The reason for these reports is it's a statutory requirement. This one is for the appointment of our new West North Ants Director of Public Health, which is Sally Burns. I know some of you have already had the opportunity to meet Sally and have a chat with her, and if you haven't, I'd encourage you to do so. So um, with that in mind, I'm happy to propose the report. Thank you, Councillor Hallam. Uh, Councillor Nunn, would you like to second the report? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Delighted to second. Sally is doing an excellent job, as you say. Many of you know as, uh, as she has been working as interim. This reflects the move to have a full-time uh, uh, Director of Public Health for West North Ants, which is going to be a great thing. It's coming to the Council, as Councillor Hallam says, as a result of the level of pay, but that has been benchmarked to be the fair and correct amount to get us the really good person to do this job. Thank you. Delighted to do second the report. Thank you, Councillor Nunn. Uh, any members of the Council wish to speak on this item at all? Please raise your hand or use the button if you possibly can. No? Okay, thank you. In that case, I'll ask for a uh, vote on this, please. On item 14, if you'd like to take a vote. Yes, no, or abstention. Thank you. Okay, if you have any difficulties in voting, please raise your hand. Otherwise, vote is carried and it's a yes. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, uh, item 15, motions. Um, motion one is proposed by uh, Councillor Kevin Parker, recharged in country parks. I'd like to invite Councillor Parker, please move the motion. You have to have five minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the motion is before you, but I would just like to add the following comments. These two country parks, Daventry and Brixworth, along with the Brampton Valley Way, some 16 miles in length and part of the National Cycle Highway, offer fantastic facilities for health and well-being for our residents. I wish to encourage more residents to use these facilities, but note there are different charging regimes at these parks which can discourage use. I would like the Cabinet to review all charges, harmonise the charges after conducting a full cost appraisal and implement a new structure as necessary in the soonest possible time this year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Parker. Uh, Councillor Irvin Swift, please, second the motion. You have up to three minutes. Yes, uh, I have nothing more to add ex except that all our parks are so good for our well-being, and two of them are in our ward, Kevin and, and my ward. And uh, if you have never been in Brixworth or in the Brampton Valley Way, it's just outside Kingsthorpe, you can all enjoy the Brampton Valley Way, and after, uh, you can enjoy uh, Brixworth Park. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. We have received a, a motion, an amended the motion, if you've all received a copy of it. Um, and I'd like to ask Councillor Jonathan Harris, please, to move the amendment. You have up to five minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, a couple of comments, really, generally to support the amended motion. Um, firstly, it's interesting to see this motion before the Council for a couple of reasons. Um, it is an area that, as a Lib Dem group, we've had a number of discussions with officers already on this particular issue. Um, the first point I want to make is um, op opposition groups are regularly challenged on their rationale for why they bring motions forward rather than engaging in conversations. Uh, and my instinct is that this is one of those areas that could have been a conversation rather than a motion. Um, it's, it's unclear, therefore, why we have this as a motion rather than a, a, a general discussion or conversation that could take place uh, with officers, especially as Councillor Parker is the Assistant Cabinet Member for Finance. Secondly, the Lib Dem Group proposed an amendment to the Council's budget in February requ requesting a freeze on country park charges, a harmonisation exercise of charges, and a piloting of short-term parking options. Uh, a request actually that's come forward and been made by many of the users of the country park. This was not supported by the administration or unfortunately commented on by either of my councillor colleagues. The proposal that the administration agreed at that time was an 11% increase in charges from £3.20 to £3.50 for four hours. The last time I was at Brixworth Country Park, which was fairly recently, these increases hadn't been applied and I sin sincerely hope that they won't. All of that said, as a proud Brixworth Ward member also, I of course welcome this motion, but it would only seem reasonable to ensure that the actions are more wide-ranging than simply a review. There are opportunities to make our parks more accessible, utilise technology more in their operation, 
and manages, manage charges to support key groups, such as the park runners who currently have to pay for a full four hours when most complete their run in 30 to 40 minutes. It would also therefore benefit from exploring the option of one hour charges, as well as making fairer use for those people who are blue badge holders. I therefore propose the amended motion to reflect these wider issues. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Beardsworth, you'd like to second the amendment? Certainly, Chair. I'd like to second the motion, and I will speak on it now. Um, we, we put this in our um, alternative budget in February, and then as soon as it wasn't accepted, we had meetings at Bricksworth with the relevant officers. Um, twice we've had meetings with them, and we've been out and, and walked the area, and they've explained about the technology um, to do with the paying system, which is somewhat difficult to change. But we felt as though it needed to be changed and, and changed quickly. Um, they've been very helpful, and um, they are think, I'm sure it's on their mind to do it, and I have mentioned it to the portfolio holder when we actually did the budget. Um, it's just a shame that we didn't all get together round the table with the Conservatives and actually talk about this because it would have saved the Council a lot of time because we've already started all this and basically we just want this to be a, a better fu functioning place for people to go. The Brampton Valley Way is used so much. It's a wonderful facility and there's a lot we could do to improve it over time. We understand that money isn't always available, but over time we could improve it. And we want to encourage people to do active walking and cycling. And it's a, you, a weekends of good weather, even bad weather, people are out there in force. So we really have to make sure that we're not overcharging people and um, not allowing people that on lower income can, to go. So hopefully you'll accept the amendment in what it's was it meant as additional to the motion as, as a way forward to make sure that this is actually done now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Parker, do you accept the amendment that's been presented here today? I have no problem in accepting the amendment, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. In that case, the uh, motion becomes substantive. And uh, would any members like to speak to the amended Adam, Adam Brown? Councillor Adam Brown, thank you. Not quite sure, Mr. Chairman, if I'm responding to the, um, the amendment or the motion. I know it has become it's substantive. It's the motion that has now been amended. to the previous debate, yep. in a sense. Uh, I do think it's, it is ever so slightly churlish to object to Conservative uh, non-Cabinet members putting forward a motion. You, we had a great uh, set to between Liberal and Labour members earlier about who has the right to speak at these meetings, who has the right to express an opinion. And uh, yes, you know, people can come to us to have a conversation, but then that goes for opposition as well. You know, there are very few things that can't be resolved by sitting around a table. However, people sometimes choose to put forward a motion. Sometimes that's simply to highlight an issue, and I think that's the case with Councillor, Councillor Parker and Councillor Irving Smith this evening. Uh, at other times, it's for, it's for undiscernible reasons. But uh, I have to say, Councillor Irving Swift is one of the most persistent councillors I've ever met. Uh, she's been bending my ear about this issue for, if not one year, then probably much longer than that, but, uh, dating right back to when we were together at uh, Dumpty District Council, particularly when it comes to the Brampton Valley Way, uh, an issue that uh, Councillor Parker raised via a motion uh, at DDC uh, m many, many months ago. So you know, I, I entirely endorse their right to bring this uh, to the public's attention uh, via a motion. It's important that uh, non-cabinet members are seen to be active in engaging with the issues that matter to their uh, uh, residents and uh, I'm sure that uh, whatever happens to this motion this evening, Councillor Irving Swift in particular will continue banging on my door, banging on the leader's door to try and make sure that this happens. Lovely, thank you Councillor Brown. Councillor Roberts. Thank you Chair. I think the, the, the Lib Dem amendment to the motion actually shows how complicated this motion is and why it shouldn't be a motion. So I'm not going to critique you for bringing it as a Conservative member, but I'm going to critique you for bringing it because it's too complicated to be dealt with as part of a motion. Um, and, and unfortunately, I, well, I'm going to vote again. I would have voted against the amendment. I would have voted, I'm going to vote against the motion. Um, I, I, I've been given assurance this evening from Councillor Brown that Delaware Park will not be included in any review, even if you put it through. Um, but it doesn't say that within the motion, and at the moment, Delapree Park is a free 
place. It's a very different park to the places that we're talking about. It's obviously got an urban location. Delapree Abbey Preservation Trust have provided um, access, free access to the house, to those residents who live in NN4. I want them all to be able to come. I don't want them to be prevented from coming to visit the house. I want to make sure that people there can have access to that. So it's that concept. But I'm not saying a review shouldn't take place, but I think it's much bigger than that. It's a consultation. It's, it's an actual look at what we're investing in our parks anyway, whether the parking charges that are being charged at different locations are being invested directly back into the, to the park itself rather than into some other area of the council. Sorry, there's something going on in me here. Um, some other area of the council. So I think it's much bigger than, than the motion allows for it. And for that reason, I'll be voting against it. But I applaud your, your position and, and you continuing to have a go at Councillor Brown because I'll be holding him to the fact that Delapri isn't included. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Randall, Wendy Randall. Yes, thank you, Chair. I can remember when the country park at Daventry was free parking. And when they introduced parking charges, there was absolute uproar. Um, because I've always felt that a country park should be a free place to go. Nobody should have to pay. And I was always led to believe that we paid for country parks within our council tax. Um, but people have accepted that in Daventry for a 12 hour parking, it is £2.20. You will find people parking in the car park, but still a lot of people don't, which causes a problem within neighbouring streets. Looking at Bricksworth charges, so Daventry, 12 hours, £2.20. Bricksworth, up to four hours, £3.20. Up to eight hours, £5.20. And up to 12 hours, £7.20. So you've got £2.20 in Daventry Country Park for 12 hours and £7.20 in Bricksworth. Now, if you looked at that and started to think about harmonising those two charges, I would be fearful that Daventry's prices would greatly increase. Um, and if it didn't mean that people were parking in other streets, it might mean that people just can't afford to go and that would be catastrophic. So I'm afraid that you know, I would be so fearful that I will be voting against the motion and the amendment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Randall. Councillor Larratt. Thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. Um, as the portfolio holder responsible for the parks and the parking, um, I totally agree with this uh, amended uh, motion. Um, our parks... Uh, across West Northamptonshire are a great facility and we need to uh, encourage as many people as possible to use them, uh, particularly with the health agenda, etc. They've got to be accessible. We have inherited, uh, Mr Chairman, uh, different parking charges for Daventry, which were set by Daventry District Council we have Bricksworth Country Park, which was set by the County Council. So we, we have some significant disparities. And I think, you know, we know how the County Council was desperate for money, and uh, perhaps that explains something, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, we, we have got some severe disparities, and we must overcome and resolve those. We're actually working on it as we speak. It's an issue I regularly discuss with the uh, Assistant Director, who's gathering information and looking at the cost implications of what it is we do. But we also need to be able to be flexible. Uh, uh, and let me declare an interest as a blue badge holder. Yes, blue badge holders. Uh, yes, there are health events that go on uh, for families with children uh, on Saturday mornings. And we need to make sure that the charges reflect the ability for young families to be able to afford and access these wonderful facilities. So, Mr Chairman, I'm totally supportive of the motion as amended. It's already work ongoing, and we will ensure that we come to some sensible outcome, uh, which is fair and uh,
provides that accessibility at the earliest opportunity. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Aaron. Um, Councillor Holland Delamere, you requested to speak? Pre the debate? Councillor Keith Holland Delamere. No? Okay, thank you. In that case, Councillor Bowen, do you wish to speak on this item? Thank you. Um, yeah, as um, Councillor Larratt has already said, there have been issues and there are issues with uh, the parking fees and inconsistencies across WNC, both for the parks, um, but also in our towns. And um, what, what it needs is an overall strategy, and that strategy needs to be budgeted. Um, and, and really, my, my purpose tonight of raising this is a plea that when you're looking at this in budgetary terms, both for uh, looking at the parks, we do not forget that we have a, a huge issue in Northampton Town Centre where parking is charged for, whereas our other three towns it isn't. And a proposal for free from three parking all the way through the week and free on-site, on-street parking for half an hour has already been put to the executive leadership team. Uh, and I would urge us to look at this in, in the whole um, and ensure that these, both these aspects are uh, budgeted uh, and prepared for the next budgetary year. So this is a challenge. Malcolm Longley knows this. Um, as does Martin Henry, because uh, like Cecile banging on about parks, I bang on about the disparity with our town centre parking. So I would just remind you all that we have a big problem in Northampton town centre and we are losing money that could be then invested in our parks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Uh, Councillor Parker, would you like to respond to the entire debate? Thank you. You have three minutes. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I won't respond to... Uh, the comments actually because uh, I'm not quite sure what some of them are trying to say but um, I'd just like to thank all the speakers for what they've said and then I'd like to move to the vote please chair thank you very much indeed I will move that to the vote then and if you please uh, would like to indicate whether you'd like to support it yes no or abstention please Okay, thank you. And the motion is now carried. Thank you very much. As amended. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, motion two proposed by Jonathan, uh, Councillor Jonathan Harris. And I'd like to invite you to please address and move the motion. You have up to five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Cabinet, councillors, the cost of living crisis is now for many much more than an exercise in reining in belts. For many, at the onset of spring, it became a choice between heating and eating, a choice that in 2022 in the United Kingdom, we should really not expect people to have to take. It is an emergency that is either affecting people now or will do later in the year. I acknowledge the work of this council on the development of its anti-poverty strategy. However, therein also potentially lies a problem. Rural poverty is often not obvious, it's hidden. And there are many who are struggling in our communities who would not necessarily even identify with or recognize the label of poverty, but are nonetheless feeling the impact of these rises. The County Council's network has identified that the cost of living crisis has become the dominant issue facing many households across the country uh, this year. They and I fully expect things to get worse in the second half of this year, with inflation potentially set to rise further, and of course the energy cap being lifted higher, and fuel costs showing no sign of abating. The CCN recent report go, goes on to identify 450,000 households across the UK are experiencing hunger. 1.1 million households are experiencing food insecurity and a further 1.14 million households are worried about food insecurity. Universal credit claimants have risen from just over 940,000 in March 2020 to just under 1.8 million in May 2020. The number of people claiming unemployment-related benefits has risen by over 86,000, council tax support claimants by over 50,000. Despite the Prime Minister constantly alleging that there are more people in work post-pandemic than pre-pandemic, the figures are somewhat misleading. 
the numbers used for this calculate or his calculation do not include the self-employed, which includes some of those three million people who fell into the category that received no COVID support of any type. If you look at the figures for all paid work, we are still around 504,000 below the pre-pandemic level of employment. Whilst we've seen the one million household support fund from government come forward, our view is there is more that could and should be done. With the horizon presenting a worsening picture over the coming year, there are some immediate steps that government could take now. These are set out in the first part of the motion. And whilst these are not within the gift of this council, it will cost us nothing potentially to press for more immediate measures to be taken now, rather than wait for months as the government did over the windfall tax. We are calling on this council, however, to prepare and do more, to do what it can to explore and establish mechanisms through a cross-party emergency task and finish group to engage with our communities, generate ideas and provide recommendations that are within its gift to prevent the worst for those who are teetering on the edge. We are suggesting that this would be modelled rather like the sustainability group following the declaration of the climate emergency. This task won't be easy. There are no easy answers. It will require creativity and ingenuity. But whilst we have 40 million pounds in general reserves alone, just a relatively small amount of these funds, which are ultimately, ultimately taxpayers' funds, could go a long way to alleviate the problem for many. It will be for this group, if it's established, to paint likely scenarios and seek funding opportunities, whilst, of course, being sensible and rational about the reality that the council itself will continue to suffer from inflationary pressures. I would urge councillors in West, West Northamptonshire to fully recognise the problem and energise around creating such a group to show compassion and separate themselves definitively from our out-of-touch administration in the North Northamptonshire, mentioned again for probably about the fourth time tonight, who've just awarded themselves a 10% rise in council allowances. I must also just finally mention um, this annual report. Um, we should be doing this in a digital aid age. It's, it's uh, another item, no matter how much the content is good, bad or ugly, um, it's not the way that we should be producing documents. We are something like 30 councillors down this evening and there are plenty of those just left on people's desks. So it's in summary, a lot of these issues therefore lead to the question, so much for a cost of living crisis. I therefore move this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Harris. Uh, Councillor Rosie Humphreys, please. Second the motion, you're up to three minutes. Thank you, Chair. I would like to second the motion. Uh, let me, I'd like to quote first from the West North Ants anti-poverty strategy, which states, whilst there is a lot of action that we can take locally to address poverty, many of the main drivers still lie with national government, which is why it is imperative that we influence the poverty debate at a regional and national level. Working together, we must continue to do all we can to build the evidence base for change. This motion sets out three measures by which the Council could influence the poverty debate and demand change. To reject a proposal to call on the government uh, to, to implement these measures would demonstrate that North, West North Ants is good on words but poor on action. Our Chancellor Rishi Sunak has recently confirmed that the return of the triple lock next year, uh, but what use is that to the thousands of pensioners in West North Ants, who are currently coping with a 7.9% inflation, had a 54% energy rise this April and a predicted further 51% increase in October, following the next energy price cap announcement. How on earth will 400 pound, a £400 pound energy grant go anywhere towards an average energy bill predicted to shoot up to almost £3,000? As the strategy states, calling on the government to change is imperative and here is an opportunity to do so. The creation of a cross-party oversight or working group to join with officers to find practical solutions to prevent destitution makes a great deal of sense. Councillors are the eyes and ears of their community as well as their representatives and are best placed to see how communities work at grassroots level to support each other. 
officers already, I understand, are preparing for what is going to be a perfect storm this autumn of those who are managing, falling into poverty and unable to buy essentials for their children, heat their homes or pay their rent, and the already poor becoming destitute and going without life's essentials that we all need to eat, stay warm and dry and keep clean. I, I second this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any members of the council who wish to comment on the motion, uh, which, uh, please indicate. I've got Councillor Mike Hallam who'd like to speak first. Thank yes, um, thank you, Chairman. I read this motion with interest as it struck me as being pretty general in its language. Um, there's nothing actually uh, mentioned that's really specific to our area at all, although Councillor Harris mentioned some v things verbally. There's actually no wording on that within the motion. So I actually did a Google, I did a Google of the text, and I was amazed, Mr Chairman, to read that Lewes and Eastbourne Council took this exact same text to their full council meeting way back on the 23rd of May. I have nothing against the people of Eastbourne, and no doubt we have some similarities in, in facing the cost of living crisis. Um, but um, there's also, I would wager, a lot of differences between the challenges and opportunities of an English seaside town to those that we face here in West Northamptonshire. Then, Mr Chairman, I was amazed to see the same text was at Mendip District Council, down there in that 100% rural, beautiful Mendip Hills. Exactly the same text. Um, now, again, I would say that a rural authority has 100% rural authority has different challenges and opportunities, as well as some similarities to those that we face in our mix of urban and rural. So it became obvious to me that this is a copy and paste motion from Lib Dem HQ, and uh, the, there is a website um, from the Lib Dems where you can see this on encouraging councils to raise it. Councillor Harris, you do make verbal reference tonight to the anti-poverty strategy that we're running, but where is the wording on that in your motion? You mentioned our general reserves and spending them a, some of that on, on some of these challenges. Where is the wording on that in this motion? Where is the wording on the work that we've already done for our own staff with our £10 an hour minimum wage? And where is the wording on some of those ideas or work that you are sort of verbally referencing that we could do specifically to our towns and villages across West Northamptonshire? Mr Chairman, this is a lazy copy and paste motion from the desk of an unelected Lib Dem employee sat in Lib Dem headquarters in London. We won't be supporting it. Instead, we'll be getting on with the ideas we already have underway right here in West Northamptonshire. Thank you, Councillor Hallam. And I must now draw the Council's attention to Rule 10 of the Council Procedure Rules, as it's now 9.45pm. It's in my view that we will not be able to deal with the outstanding matters business by 10 o'clock this evening. I appreciate we start a few minutes later and therefore I will allow some discretion on that basis. I, it's important I do read the statement out. The Rule 10 requires that all outstanding matters will now be put to the vote without further debate. This means I will not allow recorded votes on these items. I will ask the Democratic Service Manager to ask members to vote on wh whether each item should be accepted, rejected, referred, deferred or withdrawn. These options we present to the Council in order, should there be a majority in favour of a particular course of action, such as to accept a recommendation or motion, then the remaining options will not be read out. Should the Council vote to refer a recommendation or motion, I will ask for a member to oppose the appropriate body for that item to be referred to. Ladies and gentlemen, that actually is the Constitution, and we have a, a duty like to, to speak, stick please, to the Chair. Councillor Roberts, please. But I'd Make like to speak. What please, is your point Chair? of order? Thank you. Um, we're, we're halfway through a particular motion, and, and both parties, the proposer of the motion and the um, administration, have been able to speak. I'm just pleading with you to allow the two minutes for um, the opposition group, Labour group, to speak, and then you can go move to the next item because we're, we're midway through a motion. So, pleading with you to do that, Chair. Councillor Roberts, we do have four more speakers listed for this particular item, and I've been as fair as I possibly could. Chair. Councillor Harris. Um, I'd like to move to remove the motion from this council meeting this evening. Thank you. I would like to just comment briefly um, on the comments made by Councillor Hallam. I would suggest Thanks. he uses his reading eyes and his listening ears and think about the two things combined. Um, and it's nice to know that he cares so much about the people of this area. Councillor Brown, Chair. please indicate what your point of order is. Councillor Harris has clearly moved a motion. 
yet he's continued to debate the motion that he sought to withdraw. That's a very valid point. Councillor Harris, as you have indicated you'd like to remove the motion, I'll do just that. I think that's a very fair thing to do this evening, and we will remove it from here and from any further debate at this meeting tonight. Uh, and in, in line with the Constitution, which obviously we are all trying to stick with, we will do just that. So if I may have the Democratic Services Manager go through the remaining items of today, and we will take the votes as indicated. Councillor Pesser, is it something urgent that hasn't been raised? For the next meeting. Chair, I would uh, wish to withdraw the, uh, the motion in my name that's laid lower down the mo motion, so we do not need to consider that. Thank you, Roger Lee, that's noted. Thank you. So Councillor Pesser withdraws his motion as well. Okay. Paul, over to you if you'd like to... Uh, but there are no further items of business for Council to agree, Chairman. Thank you, Roger Lee. Okay, in that case, Thank I'd like you. to wish you all a very good evening and a safe journey home. Thank you very much indeed for all your support this evening.